from Northgate High School in Walnut Creek. It's Walnut Creek TV's presentation of high school football. Anthony Schultz along with Dan Wall. And Dan, we've got a couple teams, the Broncos and the Eagles. And this is for the DVAL championship. And not only that, but a possible number one seed for Division II. A couple teams playing great football. And Dan, for the Eagles, coming off a great year last season. This year, the same thing, piling up a ton of yards. Miles Harrison really leading this offense in terms of rushing. Well, he's the guy that's got all the yards. But they have eight guys that have over 100 yards rushing so it's a design by committee type of thing we know coach Murphy's running the double wing there's a website dedicated to it I mean this guy knows what he's doing when it comes to double wing. he teaches it yeah so we know he's gonna do it he's been doing it when he was Ignacio he went down to Clovis East he brought it back up here since he's returned Clayton's 31 and 4 and we know how good they are. And then for Northgate, Dan, we are past the point of saying, is this team for real? We know they're for real. Now, second year in a row, they've been in this type of situation. They're piling up the yards, too. Eric Haynes, in his own right, really piling up the yards for their rushing offense. Yeah, he's got 1,400 yards rushing and 18 touchdowns. He runs a little bit more. He's featured as the back a little bit more than perhaps Clayton, who kind of spreads it around. But they also pass the ball a lot. We're going to see the passing game. Uh, should be interesting. They run the same kind of offense, so that means practicing against it isn't that hard, where some teams can't adapt to this offense when they see it in practice, and then they really can't adapt to it when they see it in a game. Tonight should be different. It's for the title. It's Both these teams are going to the playoffs, so who knows? They might see themselves uh, to get down the line again. DVL Championship on the line right here from Walnut Creek TV. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. Got a problem? A discarded cigarette is a big problem. Cigarette butts are toxic and don't biodegrade. They travel in storm drains to end up harming our water supply and poisoning wildlife. But running this problem out of town is easy. Take a stand. Put cigarette butts where they belong. Keep Walnut Creek clean. Sportsmanship, respect each other, respect <laughs> us. Let's have fun. Remember, that's what it's about, really. Agreed? Yes, sir. Thank you. Tail. Ed, can you speak for the busy team? It is a tail. What would you like to do? Receive. Receive the ball. Which way are you going to kick? Okay, stand there looking that way. North Bay, stand there looking this way, over here. Northgate has won the toss, has chose to receive the ball. Shake hands, gentlemen, and we're going to roll here in just a bit. Yeah, Everybody and welcome back to Northgate High School here at Walnut Creek. Anthony Schultz and Dan Wall back with you. And uh, now we are going to go to the field for the National Anthem. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O 
o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. All right, there are the Northgate Matadors. With the, uh, and they told me that I heard they say they were the Matadors. It's, uh, what I thought they said but the Northgate uh, group singing the national anthem, a very nice uh, rendition of our national anthem. I just heard uh, someone announce a, a roster edition, which is always nice because we don't get those. <laughs> Dan, if they made it easy, it would be boring. That is true, Tony. So here at uh, Northgate High School in Walnut Creek, Walnut Creek TV, so happy to be able to bring to you what has become the, the DVAL championship game. And of course, we talked about it in the open, Dan, moving ahead, looking toward the uh, NCS playoffs, which are gonna start here uh, shortly. Uh, one of these teams could possibly have the number one seed. We'll talk about the other teams involved in that and where they're playing later on in the broadcast. If, if Casa Grande wins out, they'll probably be one. Clayton has a better opportunity to be one if they win because they, beat, uh, they played De La Salle. Their only loss right now is to De La Salle. Northgate probably can't get past two. But still, they're both going to be highly ranked teams for the playoffs. And it just depends on how many teams qualify and how many get into the playoff, to, depending on next week's. Uh... So taking a look at that uh, Division Two standings, Dan. Uh, Costa Grande, Northgate, Montgomery of Santa Rosa, Clayton Valley, Miramani in that mix, although Miramani has the 7-2 and two record. So the Matadors uh, unable to get that, that number one seed. But those are some of the teams in the mix there in the Division Two, looking ahead toward the NCS. But it is kind of amazing how. So getting set uh, to kick off. And Clayton Valley will kick it. Northgate will get it first. The Broncos in their home black with the gold helmets. And those red numbers. And then you have the... Clayton Valley Eagles in their travel white, trimmed in the blue and the red. And for Clayton Valley, Wakefield will do the kicking, and Farrell, and Farrell will uh, do the place kicking for the Eagles. Test one, two. I got nothing. A full house here at Northgate High School. Everybody in a festive mood. And you talk about a playoff atmosphere and really a championship game atmosphere here tonight. And we're just uh, working out a few things here, getting set to start this game. And second year in a row, Dan, these two teams have been number one and number two in the DVAL. Well, Tony, I don't know. There, I think it's back now. Let's see. Let me see. I think I, I hear myself now. How about you? Can I'm, hear? I'm hearing you Yay. through your mouth, well, but not I, through the headset. I can hear you through the headset. Okay. okay, all right. Well, so I think we can talk. It's I'd safe. say we're, right. we're set to go. We know the players are set to go, and the ball game is underway. High end over end kick that will be taken about the two-yard line to the five, to the 10, 15, and stopped right about the 20-yard line, and that's where Northgate will set up shop first and 10 as they get started here as we start the game. Jake Smith for Northgate on that return. And here's the Northgate offense for you. Kyle Austin and his 13 touchdowns. Eric Haynes, Dimitri Bukas, Matt Wang in the backfield. Nick Markakis is the wide receiver. Jake Smith, the tight end. Lee Armento, Hayeto, Ioni, and Margiev across that front line for the Broncos here as they have it first down and 10 at their own 20 yard line. One thing I noticed right off the bat, Tony, Clayton Valley's a lot bigger. So they're going to have to see how that size matchup goes along the line. First one around the near side. And that's going to be a nice gain for Northgate. And that's Nick Mastrelli getting that uh, first carry. And he picks up a good gain. 
out close to the 30, just short of the 30 yard line, leave him a couple yards short of that first down. So bring up second down for the Broncos. Now they're going to throw out to the far side. That's going to be complete. That'll be enough for a first down. And that's going to be Jake Smith, the tight end, and that will be a first down for Northgate. So two plays in, one run and one pass, and a fresh set of downs for the Broncos. Here's that uh, Clayton Valley defense for you. Yemi uh, Fashola, Jax Carter, Paul Farr, Lucas Ostalaza across that front line. Kabuyoy, Peralta, Zapanda, and Dylan Jew are the linebackers. Morris Dominguez and Tanner Ra in the defensive secondary for Clayton Valley. Handoff going off the right side. And that is going to be Eric Haynes who's having such a big year. Eric Haynes. Kabuyo making the tackle there for the Clayton Valley defense. Couple yard gain. Set him up at the 40 yard line here. So Tony on the first three plays they've ran around the uh, right side. Throw a pass to the left side and that time up the middle. So they're kind of testing out all the areas of the field so far. Trying to go both ways. A one pass, offset eye in the backfield. Pitch to Haynes, coming to the near side. Trying to turn the corner, then to be shoved out of bounds. Violently so, but certainly, but not before he went out of bounds. And number one, Shane Moore is coming up there to finish off that tackle after a gain of a couple. It's going to leave him a couple of yards short of the first down after a gain of three. It'll bring up third down here for Northgate. Broncos 8-1 overall as likewise for Clayton Valley out into the flat. Caught by Smith. He's going to have the first down and a couple of more. And he's going to be in now to Clayton Valley territory at the 49 as they pick up another first down. Well, that time he got a little pick outside by Mistrelli. But just enough, they're, they're throwing around that big line. They've only ran inside one time. So they're trying to get the ball to the outside in that pass play right there. If you don't throw that ball bad, you're, you can gain two or three yards on just about any play. And they're going to set him up right at midfield on that last play. First down to 10 here for Northgate. A pair of first downs here on this opening drive here for the DVAL championship. Of course, Clayton Valley trying to go for their second in a row, Dan. Able to pick that up last year. And Eric Haynes fighting through a wave of tacklers. Hayes into Clayton Valley territory after a gain of three. It'll bring up second down at seven. One thing, a uh, great disparity tonight, Northgate with 30 players on their roster, Tony, and uh, Clayton was 75. <laughs> so they might have a little bit more depth, just uh, yeah, logic I, would say. And I noticed the rosters that you brought, Dan, it, it really shows that. It's, yes, like, a, it's yes. like a dictionary here yes. for Clayton Valley. Next down, and they pick up a couple of yards down to the 45-yard line. And that will be Eric Haynes one more time. But just a couple of yard gain down, that's going to leave them uh, about five yards short of a first down. It's third and five, and uh, you see what they dial up. You can see so far they really haven't ran the double wing so much. As we know, Clayton Valley likes to run offensively. Going more with the traditional set. Now, this time they're in a lot tighter. And uh, third and five, we'll see what they do. Generally like to pass on this down. Tight formation. Austin looking over his cheat sheet on that, on that wrist. Haynes lined up as the tail back in the eye. He's going to get it. No, they're going to fake it. Looking, fires over the middle into double coverage. The ball's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Trying to get a fix on who made that play. Mastrelli was the intended receiver. Beautiful play in that secondary. Zach Dominguez, number four, back there to knock that away. The double coverage was there. So initially it looked like Dominguez was open and then all of a sudden the defense got there to knock it away. And, and he had a nice head start towards the line of scrimmage. He didn't throw off his back foot, but just kind of floated that one. Dominguez with enough time to get back and make the play and force Northgate into the first punt of the night. So after a couple of first downs. And, and, and Clayton's not buying punt. They don't have anyone back deep. But they are going to kick it. This one a wobbler. It's going to bounce about the 22 and then go out of bounds. We'll see where they finally mark this. It should be somewhere inside the 20. But uh, the most the important point is Clayton Valley is going to get the football. And now here's that Clayton Valley offense. Gabe Taylor will uh, do the quarterbacking. 14 touchdowns for him. Miles Harrison had huge numbers with the 18 TDs, over 1,000 yards. 
Shane Morris, Tanner Raw in that backfield. Peralta and Vicema are the tight ends. Rogers, Connor, Crab, Carter, and Farr, the quintet along that front line. We'll have the Northgate defense for you right after this play. Now, First Tony, down to 10 for Clayton Valley. I'll Go ahead, everyone man. out there in the uh, in listening world that uh, Clayton Valley runs this double wing, and they do a lot of weird things off it. They can hand off twice in the backfield between halfback and tailback. The quarterback can run. We are from this hot potato pitch. That time a straight handoff to Harrison. There's Harrison, and still pushing the pile. Continues to push the pile. They finally call. They finally blow the whistle. It'll be a five-yard gain. And here is that Northgate defense. Floyd Armento, Michael Hayeto, John Crucker, Dimitri Bukas, the cross that front line. Jake Smith, Edison Canales, Eric Haynes, Kyle Muller, the linebackers, Mastrelli, Cuneo, and Sam Dale in the secondary for Northgate. So a punt for Northgate on their first time. And out, well, stays on his feet somehow, breaks a couple of tackles. And then finally, going to be wrestled to the ground, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally wrestled to the ground wow. out near midfield. What a powerful run that time. And you see why he's got so many yards, Dan. It's Miles Harrison again. Harrison with 1,065 yards, 18 touchdowns. You've heard of rack run after catch. Yes. That was C-A-C carry after catch. <laughs> that was amazing. he just took the defender on that play, I believe it was number 37, Edison Canales, and took him 18 yards past the initial contact point <laughs> down the field. And you notice, Dan, on the uh, tackle call, I jumped the gun a little bit. I thought he was going to go down 10 yards you caught sooner. yourself, Tony. It was impressive how that you came back from that. Great run. And that will be a first down for the Eagles now at the 48-yard line. Their own 48, first down and 10. You know, Tony, uh, you can, I think you can call tonight a sellout. This, this place is pretty packed. Handoff up the middle, and Harrison picking up some good yardage here on first down. Actually, they stopped him for a, a rather short game. They're going to give him a couple of yards there on first down. It'll bring up second down and eight. But he must be tired after that last run. Coach, uh, Tim Murphy uh, started in this area at Ignacio. Had some great teams there before he left for Clovis East and then uh, came back to Clayton. And we mentioned in the Open, 31-4 and four since he came back. Absolutely fantastic. And obviously, Dan, well-schooled in this offense. Talk about that here a little bit more after this play. And here comes Clayton now, and looks like they're going to call a timeout. That'll give us time to talk about that. You talk about Coach Murphy, and he lectures on this offense all over the place, Dan. And you talk about, uh, you know, the shotgun, double wing, going no huddle. And apparently, Dan, they're very interested in this in Newcastle, England, Germany, Amsterdam. There does clinics over there. And, of course, you know, all over America as well. And apparently Europe, even though they're not really into um, American football, unless it's the Super Bowl, but apparently at the lower levels, Dan, they're interested. Well, there, it, hasn't Jacksonville moved to London? <laughs> They might as well. well. Next year, I think they're playing two of their home <laughs> games in London. So, uh, no, he's, uh, when you talk about, you know, when this first came out, it used to be, in my mind, simplistic. Remember the old hot potato pitch we always used to call it? And that's what Ignatia ran. And even when Coach Ivankovic took over, they carried that tradition on. And it always was that just quick pitch and everyone goes. But now it's not as simplistic. Now you're running straight plays up the middle. Now you're running double reverses off of inside handoffs, not on outside handoffs like your traditional kind of reverses normally go. So you just watch them. They do a lot of things uh, differently now. And as it advances, Coach Murphy's one of the experts. He's taken it uh, farther. Here's Miles going to get again. Breaks a couple of tackles. And he's going to be a couple of yards short of the first down. But you talk about gaining yards after contact. And that time, Dan, they pulled the offside guard, it looked like, and the tackle. And what's also interesting, Dan, you know, you see a lot of times one guy will pull. Maybe two guys will pull. In this offense, three guys do a lot three. of pulling. Everyone pulls. I was watching some highlights of the game against College Park. It looked like it had 27 guys out there blocking. If we got a formation or an early motion type penalty here. Going to go against the offense. Here it is. And it's actually wow. encroachment on the defense. Yeah, you know here, if you cross the line, it blows the play dead So in high school. So that'll be a five-yard penalty against the defense and a first down for Clayton Valley. So move the chain. Second first down for Clayton as they started this one from their own 20-yard line. So Northgate took the opening kickoff. They moved it to 35 yards, got a couple of first downs, forced a punt. Clayton Valley trying to cash in with their opening possession here of the ball game. 
Hand off, Harrison, and unable to break a tackle this time, although he does have some pretty good yardage going right up the middle. But you talked about the variations uh, of this particular offense, Dan. They don't throw the ball a whole lot, Dan, but when they do, they do have success. Well, Taylor's thrown for 843 yards and 14 touchdowns. Usually what you do is you sucker the defense in and don't throw until about the third quarter, and then they're used to seeing the same formation over and over. This time they hand off on the left side. Same play. Harrison once again breaking tackles. A very tough runner, Tony. Boy, very difficult to take him down. He's going to have another first down for Clayton Valley. They'll move the chains again. And, you know, if you are the Northgate defense right now, Dan, it's you got to be getting kind of frustrated and tired, even though it's very early, because you take so many hits and he just keeps on going. You think you got him down, but you just can't quite get him to the ground. There's a good look at Harrison right now with some of his mates. Well, you can see the lower body. He's got some real thick lower body and it's hard to tap when you keep your legs going you need multiple tacklers to bring a runner like that down Harrison cuts it back this time taking on a lot of blows picks up good yardage again and you look at the uh, as Taylor coming into today's play Dan he had only 53 attempts and in those 53 attempts you talked about the 14 touchdowns and also he's averaging almost 20 yards per attempt only uh, 1065 yards He's averaging over a little over 100 yards uh, per game. And then you have Harrison at 133. This time caught behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to fake it and go the other way. Faked everybody out, including us up here. That's not hard to do, Tony. I was completely faked out that time. That's why you and I are up here, because we got faked out too many times down there. They're, they're just going real quick, and it seems like it's just Harrison, Harrison, Harrison. Now they uh, shift out and put Harrison out uh, to Taylor's left. Taylor in that shotgun. Going to hand off. Harrison gets it. And he kind of goes over a pile, kind of tripping over one of his own players. And it tripped up over Paul Farr, number 77, one of the linemen who got pushed into the backfield. So a nice surge that time by the Northgate defense. He stripped over the right tackle as he went right side, and now it's going to bring up a fourth and five. So this is a big defensive play in this game. We're already eight minutes into the ball game, no score. Walnut Creek TV, TV comes home, www.walnutcreektv.org. Hand off, Harrison. Now they're going to go the other way, and they're going to pick up the first down. Crashing through some tacklers, able to stay on his feet, and that was all that deception. And on the carry, Tanner Raw, number 18, the senior, got it. And uh, a lot of people went with Harrison. But still, Dan, there was a lot of tacklers there, just not able to make that tackle right away there for Northgate. I think the reasoning, as you mentioned, Tony, is deception and the fact that I had no idea who had the ball, which means probably right. some of them had no idea who had the ball. I thought first a <laughs> fake to Harrison. I thought Taylor still had it, and then he handed back to one of his, uh, his other tailbacks. Taylor pitched to Harrison. And this time he is going to be caught and dragged down. Nice open field tackle that time by Northgate. Getting up off the pile is number 44. And that's Kyle Muller, the linebacker, 6'1", 180 pounds. And that was certainly the best tackle we've seen here so far by Northgate tonight. Well, I think that's the kind of play that's going to have to be made if they're going to stay in this game. They're going to have to get some individual effort and some tackles from guys like their, their linebacking crew near the line of scrimmage. Harrison tries to cut it upfield, does breaks a tackle, gets to the outside. Harrison going in, touchdown Clayton Valley. And an 80-yard drive for Clayton Valley here with 3.18 to go. And the Eagles on the board first, it's 6 to nothing. That's a 16-yard run, and it pretty much encapsulates the entire drive. He got maybe four or five on the first burst, and then it was all Harrison to get back in the end zone, finally going down the right sideline with a, a number of Eagles following him. But uh, this guy's a hard runner, Tony, and they're going to have to really come up with a plan to stop him if they're going to win this game. 19th touchdown for Miles Harrison. Snap, and they're going to fake it. Running, looking into the end zone, fires, and that is going to be good for the two-point conversion. And that is number 41 on the reception. That is Sean Vicema, the other tight end, one of the tight ends. And boy, talk about the fake. They faked everybody out again, including me. I actually, I actually saw that, And then get the two-point so conversion. I get two points for seeing. <laughs> Dan saw it, and it's eight to nothing. So you talk about all the deception, Dan, and even it's even deceiving when they're going with the, uh, the, the point after. 
That was a beautiful uh, play. I, you know what g gave it away is when the kicker lined up only a yard behind the line of scrimmage. So when he took his first step, he was already beyond the holder. So <laughs> gives you a little clue they're not kicking on that one. But you can't see that from the other side of the, uh, the ball, too, sometimes. Impressive drive for Clayton, 80 yards, Tony. Harrison pretty much exclusive on that drive, but reminds you of the last game here we did against Las Lomas, if you remember. Las Lomas scored using one running back 52 yards on their first drive and hardly ever scored until the fourth quarter after that. So we'll see if Northgate can bounce back. Same situation they were in, they came back and scored on their next drive to tie up the game. We'll see if they can do it here. That was the, uh, the Battle of the Creek game that we had for you, won by the Broncos 31-17. A couple of years in a row now where the, the Broncos have beaten the Crosstown Rivals. Kickoff by Clayton Valley. And he's going to have a chance to return. Yes, it is. And he stepped on the goal line. No, he didn't. To the 10. Nearly tripped up. 15. And it's going to be out close to the 20. About the 19-yard line. And that's where Northgate will have it. Here with uh, 3.11 to go here in the opening quarter. Yeah, it's going to be interesting on those kickoffs because Zach Smith is a very reliable receiver and a very sure-handed kind of guy, but he's not a speed burner. So they're not going to get that big speed burst coming out of the, uh, off the goal line on a kickoff return. They're going to get a, what they've gotten on the first two times is get it out to the 20-yard line. Don't fumble. <laughs> that is the key. Don't fumble the ball. All right, Northgate trying to answer. Moved it fairly well in that uh, first time they had it. Forced to punt, man in motion. They're going to go reverse here to the near side. And able to get out and then finally pushed out of bounds. Nice gain, not Wang, and he's going to be hit late. And that is going to draw the flags. And it looked like, was it Shane Morris, number one, was involved in that. He was on the sideline. I'm not sure if he made that illegal it, hit. He didn't necessarily make an illegal hit, Tony. He hit him in bounds, but he just wouldn't let go. And then finally they ran into that kicking apparatus that the kicker uses to practice. The net, yeah. If he probably would have ran him all the way out to the track and kept him up, they wouldn't have thrown that flag. It just so happened he didn't let go. And then when they run into that piece, it just looks like a violent act. And they're going to rightfully so give him a personal foul penalty for rough. Uh, you no, know, it's going to be rough, uh, you know, a personal foul. About seven yards, Dan, on the play initially and then 15 more. So that's going to be a 22-yard gain all told for Northgate. Seven for Matt Wang and then the additional uh, coming by way of the laundry. And this is very s similar to that last game we were here because if you remember when Los Lomas got in trouble, it was because they started getting penalties like this. And I think they even had a personal foul penalty, which gave uh, Northgate a first down on their first score. Which reminds me, that was a game that was, seemed to, it was full of penalties. Here's Haynes trying to go over the left side and stopped just after about a yard, maybe a two yard gain for Eric that time as they unpile. It'll bring up second down. You know, it must be word for a team like Clayton Valley, especially in the league they play in, is not, you don't see a lot of passing. You know, they, they, maybe in their exhibition season they saw it, but College Park runs this similar kind of double wing, tight run all the time offense. I'm not going to get into Mount Diablo and some of those other teams. I don't know what they run. <laughs> I haven't seen them and I don't know what's going on. I do know that Concord throws the ball a lot, but you, you, both these teams had trouble versus Concord. Clayton won by a point. You know, Northgate lost by two. And points. you look at Concord's record; it's six and three. The Minutemen feeling a pretty good team here. Caught in the backfield and sent to the ground. First man to get there, number 28, and that's uh, Brandon Sovic, able to get him in the backfield. And Yemi Fashola, number 88, also there. As they catch Haynes behind the line of scrimmage, he's going to lose a couple of yards. Dan, it's going to bring up third down at about eight yards here. Has to get to about the 47-yard line of Clayton Valley to get a first down. So a big play defensively there. Of course, last year, both these teams talking about Dan finishing at one and two in the league. Kind of battling for that top spot here again. Roll out to the left. Throws. Got a man. It's going to be incomplete. Open initially. And that was uh, number eight, Stephen Wolf. The wide receiver, Dan, it looked like he was open the ball a little bit too much to the sideline that time. Yeah, he's, he's throwing the ball just a little bit. That time a little bit too much. The time before, not, not enough. He seems to be throwing on the run, though, on just about every play. He hasn't been able to set up in the pocket and look downfield. So another uh, sequence where uh, after the penalty this time doesn't hurt Clayton Valley. They're going to get the ball back. And we have a minute 34 left in the first quarter. So it will be another punt here for Northgate is they'll have to give up the football again. And the question is, can they get Clayton Valley stopped? 
Here's the kick, waiting for it at about the 23. Catch is made. That's Harrison with room to run. Breaks a tackle, chased down from behind. Can they get him to the ground? Yes, they can. He's going to pick up about seven yards or so, maybe eight yards on the uh, return. But to, when they get him down like that, Dan, I guess they got to breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. I think he's probably just getting to the ground at some point. He does not go down with the first tacker, tackler very often. You saw no, he sure does Especially if you tackle him up high. You saw when he went down a couple times down here, they got him low, took his legs out. Anytime you grab him around his shoulders, he just keeps carrying you. So what they're going to have to really look for is to either spy a guy on him or send a couple guys his way. The minute that he's hit, someone else has taken out his legs. So hopefully that's not dangerous because you can hurt a kid if you take out his legs too hard. Taylor. And this time it's not going to be Harrison. Bursting out of the secondary. Big gain across midfield into Northgate territory. Huge gain for Shane Morris and Clayton Valley. And it looked like Floyd Armenta came up to make the tackle finally. But it's another huge gain. And you talk about getting to the outside so quickly that time. Shane Morris, boy, and Miles Harrison, a little thunder and lightning here from Clayton Valley. And I have to just correct you, Tony. He didn't come up to make the tackle. He ran over and followed him and made the tackle. <laughs> Yeah, he probably got the worst of that, but still able to get him to the ground nonetheless. And this is what I was talking about. Eight guys with over 100 yards, and now we're seeing Morris featured in a big game. Late Valley again. The up man's going to get it. We are totally faked out. Huge play. Finally going to be corralled inside the 30. And then down at about the 26, maybe 27-yard line, Ruben Vega on the carry. That time the up man got it, and we kind of followed it backwards. And then Vega went forward, and finally Northgate makes a tackle. But, boy, they have got to be a little shell-shocked right now. Second year here for Tim Murphy. They won the league, of course, last year, Dan. And in the NCS, they beat Rancho Katati, lost to Oakdale in the NorCal Championship game. And he told me that was like the first time they had that particular, particular game. So a whole lot of success for Clayton last year. Trying to go up the middle this time and go to the middle for some pretty good yards again. And that is going to be Tanner Raw, number 18, on the carry that time. Yeah, you could see Clayton Valley uh, being, a, if they win tonight and win out, uh, possibly going to the state championship. I think last year they would have if they had won that game. You know, Casa Grande, we talked about the Division II standings. Casa Grande of Petaluma, 9 0. Gauchos at Cardinal Newman in Santa Rosa tonight. Cardinal Newman, 7 2. That could be a nice game up there. There's Raw again, just a couple of yards. Raw gets close to a first down as he reaches the 20-yard uh, line of Northgate. You see, this is how they set this up. They run Harrison eight out of ten times, and then you, everyone thinks Harrison, and then, oh, oh, it's Morris. I didn't see him. Oh, it's the fullback. I didn't see him. Oh, it's Raw. I didn't see him. And then they guess what? Back to Harrison. That, they, they have so many weapons and so many different ways they run this offense basically out of the same set that it's just very confusing. I mean, and this is, it's good for a, for a high school team because you don't get to practice as much. Obviously, as a professional team, a college team gets to practice. So that is the end of the first quarter with Clayton Valley on the move and leading it 7-0. Walnut Creek TV, TV comes home. www.walnutcreektv.org. Comcast Channel 28, Channel 26 in Rossmore, Astound Channel 29, and on AT&T Uverse, Channel 99, and you were on all those new media things, those newfangled media things, Dan, which old guys like you and new I fangled. don't do. Newfangled. Uh, YouTube.com slash City of Walnut Creek. I do YouTube. I do that one too. Facebook.com slash Walnut Facebook. Creek TV. I do that one not very often do, and, and not very well. I would see your face on Facebook. I don't put it on there. Thank you. Well, that's, that's, then that's called no Facebook. <laughs> Twitter.com slash Walnut Creek Gov. I don't do Twitter. So you can see us on all of those, and I, I saw a stat the other day with only 16 percent of adults are actually doing Twitter. It's mostly yeah, the kids. I, I can do the internet. There's a lot of great things on the internet. YouTube you know. is fantastic. You're, you're YouTube a big music is guy. Oh, I'm a bit, I love it. You can't can, get you enough You can of go it. on there and put in just about any band from today. From You can go back and see stuff from 30 Winterland years. 30 years ago. Easy. But I mean, you say you're a fan of, uh, uh, of uh, a Five Finger Death Punch or Avenged Sevenfold, one of the new bands. You can, wow. you can get full concerts from this year in high def. Unbelievable. Free. At your fingertips. Okay, start of the second quarter. Raw in motion. Hand up. Miles bouncing off some tacklers. Not going to get very far this time. Just a couple of yards for Miles. We'll call it a three-yard gain. It'll bring up second down and seven. And as they unpile, Jake Smith there defensively for the Broncos. 
Jake, a four-year football player here. We saw him introduced on the parent night, which was tonight. And it's his last game here, unless they get a playoff game, the last regular season game. They, they should probably host one playoff game here. All right, Taylor hands off. Harrison, right side, cuts it back inside and then hit and met. Brought down fairly quickly that time. Harrison brought down, it looked like Eric Haynes, the first guy there defensively. Haynes, Ashbury, and Jack, uh, Jake Smith once again were there. And just tough to stop him once he gets that full head of steam. Going to need as many bodies around the football as they can. Talking about that Northgate defense. You know, second most rushing yards in history, Dan, uh, of Cal in California for Division Two. That was last year, 5,000 plus. And I found out that wasn't the record. Apparently, Vacaville had the number one. And they last year, Clayton Valley missed it by like 100 yards. I look at some of these numbers, Dan, are they going to measure here for the first down? And these numbers are just absolutely mind-boggling. Look at uh, Harris Ross over at Pittsburgh. Even before he got injured, he set the career record. And uh, the Pirates tonight playing Antioch in the big little game, which is wow. not as big as it used to yeah. be. Antioch it's kind of like the little, little game. Now. Yeah. But you know, Tony, I was coming from the Sharks game last night, and they still put the lights on at Pittsburgh High School at night so people don't go paint a panther at the center of the uh, field. I was like, it's still... We still do that. And they do it at Deer Valley and they do it at Antioch whenever those three, some combination of those three teams meet. Well, BVAL, good, good teams. Pittsburgh, Antioch, both having good years, Dan. Antioch is not having no, good No, Pittsburgh and Deer Valley Deer should be having good years. Antioch down again. Raw going to get the handoff going up the middle. And Tanner going to bully his way for a few yards. Ian Marford. We, he, he was a roster addition. We heard that from a parent. That's how we get our information, folks. You know, I just got through reading <laughs> Bill King's book, which is a fabulous book. You should read it, Tony. Holy Toledo, a Tales from Bill well, King. Well, you know, no. It's a great book. Yeah, and sounds interesting. He was like the most researched and prepared guy ever, they say. And that's how we get our information up. Dad tells us. Hey, Ian Moore for number 53. Handoff, quarterback draw, this time going right up the middle, battling through some tacklers. Getting close to that goal line. Is he in? The Eagles say yes. The officials say no. Going to be just short. And, uh, boy, Gabe Taylor. And it's going to be a first down and goal situation. And, you know, if you are Northgate, Dan, you know, I say this the second time, you've got to be a little shell-shocked here. You just can't seem to stop well, these guys. Well, it's going to be 160 yards in two drives. And then going in, and that will be touchdown. a touchdown. Touchdown, Clayton Valley. And so it's they, Gabe Taylor going across for the Eagles. So I'd say, Tony, uh, they've gained 160 yards because both times they took over. Well, actually, they had better field position the second time. But let's just let's throw out 150. Most, almost all of it's rushing. And I'd say 70 of it is them carrying Northgate Broncos on their back for most of it. So it's been very impressive so far. I think a little bit more impressive even than last year because last year really was pro throw every play. And this year we're seeing a lot better. And this time they kick the extra point and, and they it's miss no it, good. which tells you why they faked the first one. So that will make it 14 to nothing as Farrell kick out of Raw's hold wide left. And so that's the good news for Northgate. The bad news is, Dan, at some point they're going to have to figure out a way to stop these guys. Well, that's it's just how this, this has always been. Every time I've ever seen a Coach Murphy coach team or a team that was – inherited his offense this is how, the, how it's been Ignatio was the same way when they were going through their power days when we used to do the games over uh, at, when Clayton first opened there I think we did a, a final season game it was Clayton Ignatio and it was for the title and it was once again it was Ignatio Valley with their power run and now it's Clayton Valley with this system and the power run and uh, I think even more so than stopping them I, I have a feeling coach Lowell knew that he was going to have to score some points tonight but their offense hasn't done anything yet and I think they're probably more concerned about that they thought maybe we could keep up with them score wise but knowing they're going to score three or a four lot touchdowns. of points you know and that comes back to that whole situation at least let's play keep away on offense we'll keep it we'll run a lot of time and then maybe if we can come up with a turnover or two maybe that's the situation that will turn the game around but uh, Give a lot of credit to that offensive line. You got uh, Justin Rogers, the all-league center last year. Jax Carter, you know, really good in that line. Played great pad level. They get off the ball well, Dan, and we're seeing a lot of that so far in those first two drives. And Northgate going to get their third crack at it. This one from the seven. Out across the 20. Hit and met near the 25. Pushes the pile across the 25. 
to about the 20, maybe the 26 yard line. First and 10 here for the Broncos. Yeah, that was Wang that time. And you saw Wang a little bit more speed. Got a little bit more of a, of a burst outside after the uh, catch of that kickoff. And he got out to the 25 this time, but still got to go 75 yards. But they, this is where you really need to sustain a drop. You need to show that you can match up offensively as as well because if you go out and they score another touchdown it's going to be hard to come back in this game against Clayton Valley. Northgate 10-23 to go here from their own 26. You're going to swing it out here for Smith. He breaks a tackle and Smith gets out across the 30 to the 35 yard line to leave him just about a yard short of the first down. So the tight end Jake Smith been fairly active. He's got a couple of catches here so far tonight. Well, that's been their most effective play, but you can't run it every single time because poor Jake would probably be carried off on a stretcher, but <laughs> did it every time. So, but he's done. That's the third time they've ran that little out to Smith, and it's been positive yardage all three times. So let's see if maybe they can build off of that and run something back the other way, something a little trickeration on their own, Tony. You like that word, that trickeration? Yeah. I like yeah. Matriculate the ball down the field, boys. Matriculate. <laughs> Three wide receivers spread. Looks like they run that little bubble screen out there to the far side, Dan. Uh oh, you've been watching uh, college football, haven't you, Tony? Well, you had to, to Jake Smith kind of race out a little bit ahead of, uh, I think it was uh, Stephen Wolf, number eight, who made the catch, kind of creating that little screen, that little wide receiver screen on that far side. Picks up a pretty good gain on that play, about uh, four yards. From second down, here's Wang in motion. He's going to get it. Going to be forced backwards, cuts it up, fumbles the football, and Clayton Valley has got it. That's Tanner Raw who got on the football, and that will be Clayton Ball at the 40-yard line of Northgate, and that is a huge blow to the Northgate cause because you talk about playing on a short field with a team they have not been able to stop as of yet, and now the defense with their backs up against the wall here. Yeah, interesting call. Uh, they had shown they could throw and they just even just throwing short passes they were gaining some positive yardage but you come back on that reverse and when you get a defender who's already running one way that's the only thing he can really do is to reach back and try to get the ball out of your hand and that's exactly what happened there Clayton Valley offense back on the field and this one to be swarmed up there and they're gonna lose some yards that was number 38 Xavier Crawford on the carry. And if I'm not mistaken, is that the same Xavier Crawford that used to play for Pittsburgh? The Steelers? No, the Pirates. Oh, the Pirates, yeah. It, it's possible, Tony. I, <laughs> you know, now that Clayton Valley is a charter school, anybody they can, can attract, yeah, they they can can attract, attract everybody. Uh, well, look across. That looks like an old Antioch uh, sideline in the 70s when they used to carry 80 people on their roster. They probably got some kids over there that could start at other schools, but they're uh, involved in another one of those, uh, involved with a really good program, really good coaching. Loss of six in the play, second down at 16. Under pressure, now rolling to his left, still under pressure, going to try to turn the corner and does, and then forced out of bounds before getting back to the original line of scrimmage. So a couple of good defensive plays back to back here for Northgate, and this is going to bring up a third down and very long. But well, he did gain back 10 of those yards on that uh, keeper. And you got to think about it too, Dan, that uh, on this side of the field, you figure it's going to be four down territory. Clayton doesn't punt very much anyway. I mean, Gabe Taylor is the punter, Dan, and I think they've only punted a handful of times all season. So you figure they're going for it on fourth down no matter what, but especially on this side of the field with a 14-point lead. Yeah, you'd basically give them the ball back to... Taylor, the fan. Northgate, where you fumbled it. Roll to the right. There's a flag down. Could be holding. Taylor letting it fly. Way down the field. It's going to be caught. Touchdown, Clayton Valley. It's coming Zach back. Zach Dominguez, number four. It's coming four. back. And there's a flag after on a celebration. Now, I wonder if, since it's a hold and that play doesn't count, whether the celebration counts. <laughs> <laughs> because now, if there's it's no personal, reason to celebrate. But the, uh, the personal foul, of course. Would they, if they, I'd like to see how many yards they're going to get on this because <laughs> you could argue, well, if, you, if it's a hold and there's no touchdown, so how can we celebrate a touchdown? <laughs> this is those interesting. This is why these guys get paid the big money. But it's going to be a hold. It I is. saw the flag come out here. The ref immediately singled to bring it back. Let's hear what they have to say. Now, there is the holding call going against Clayton Valley. Yeah, I, and they're I, just going to forget yeah. the other one. Yeah, personal foul. Oh, going to go the other way. They actually called a personal foul on Northgate. Northgate. So I think what they're going to do in this situation is they mark it ten yards back for holding. 
And then they mark it 15, 15 yards, yards ahead up. and then replay so it down. basically, Clayton Valley is going to get a five-yard <laughs> gain on a play that shouldn't have happened. And that, of course, folks, is because it's a personal foul. Well, they look, tack it. Here's another thing, too. So if it's not a touchdown, how can you taunt a guy from the defense? From a phantom touchdown. If, 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 if phantom touchdown. <laughs> he must have said the magic words or something down there on that one. So an offense, a foul against the offense and a flag against the defense. And as Dan said, it'll be five yards and we'll do it over. And since that came from the spot, not the line of scrimmage, because it was a spot foul behind, that's why it went 15, 10 yards back all the way back. And now it's going to be third down and about 15. 15. Yeah, they need the uh, Northgate 30-yard line here for a first down. There's the first crazy play of the game. Here we go again. One more time. Jailbreak! Breaking a tackle, breaking one tackle, still on his feet. Gets to midfield and then finally corralled there. So another wild play and another flag comes wow. in. And we've got an injured Bronco. Yeah, that looks like it's this number 37, This is probably going to be a personal Dan. foul on someone or an illegal block. If 37's down, you could have an illegal block because that's probably why the reason he got hurt. And it's yes, Canales it is. It's a block got below hurt. the knees. That's why Canales Shop is, block. is uh, having trouble getting off the field right now. Well, it was an illegal chop block against the Eagles, and Canales, boy, he is, there you see him being helped off. And that is just an ugly situation right there, so a whole lot of running around, and it's going to be a penalty against uh, the Eagles nonetheless. That's, a, if I'm not mistaken, a high-low block on that one, and that's probably where that, that came in. So the, the last two plays have been nuttier than a payday bar, Tony, is what I've, I've been waiting to use that line since Halloween. But um, where, where are we going with this? Because now it's four. I think maybe they'll decline the penalty. They'll take the play because it's fourth and 19 and at, at midfield. But Clayton might still go for it. I think they'll go for it anyway, Dan. Like I said, they just don't punt. And Taylor is the punter, but he's obviously not lined up in a punt formation here. They might pooch it. Yeah, they are. They're going better. They're, they're, well, unless they're going to. No, Taylor, and he is going to punt it. There is a surprise with nobody back there. This one's going to bounce at the 15, roll through the 10, and then at the 5, and then be down at about the 4-yard line by Clayton Valley. So that works out good for Clayton. They don't punt very much, but when they do, it comes up roses. So all the way down to the 4-yard line, Northgate will take over there with 7.41 to go in the half. They trail it 14 to nothing. Yep, Tony, so things were looking pretty good there when they were chasing the quarterback around uh, the last two plays, but uh, after they, t they refuse that penalty, the punt comes. You know, that's the problem with not putting anyone back deep. you got to figure at some point, you know, they're going to try that. Or maybe, you, I don't know, if you call timeout, whatever. Try to, you try to get someone back there so the ball doesn't bounce 20 yards. You probably could have had the ball around your 20. Well, at least they've got the ball. Can they do anything with it? And they're going to get some good yardage here. Haynes down the near sideline, and Haynes has got himself a big gain and a first down. So that came from the four-yard line, and Eric able to get all the way out past the 25 to about the 27-yard line. He's so a, pick up a 23 a, yards on that carry. Tony, he got a great seal block by his left uh, uh, side of the line there. That, there was a big hole once he got outside. Good speed to get outside. One thing about Clayton you can see, though, they have some guys that can run with him and catch him uh, in the, down the sideline. But a huge play for Northgate to get him out deep out of their own end. Masterelli coming in motion. They fake it to him. They go give it off to Eric here. Just a couple of yard gain. Swarmed under by the defense. And a host of players there including number 38, Xavier Crawford for Actually, Clayton Valley. Swarmed over, under, and sideways, I think, which was a song by the Yardbirds back in the 60s, but that's another story. A little, whole tribute, lot of little tribute for you, Tony. Well, thank you, Dan. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I wish you'd let me ask for it first. Swing pass out to the outside. Going to turn the corner, pick up some nice games. That's Mastrelli, finally forced out of bounds by Shane Morris, but another nice game here for Northgate and another first down for the Broncos so moving it a little bit here Dan can they sustain a drive and get on the board I'm not a coach Tony and I've I coached one year with uh, Ferris over at Antioch but uh, I'm just going to say that if it was me I'd run that play every play until they prove they could stop it because they've ran it five times and have five positive yardage 
and Boy, three first downs. And you look at where some of these, you look at the outside receivers, Dan, and where the uh, defenders are lined up against them. They're giving them a lot of room out there. Haynes upended after a couple of yard gain. Nice submarine tackle that time. And it looked like it was number 18, Tanner Raw. Coming up, making that low tackle, bring up second down and about the four yard gain on the play. It'll bring up second down and six. And you can see, if you look, number 38 out here, Xavier Crawford, he's 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. If you threw the ball out, here, out to the far receiver out here, I think that's Mistrelli. It is. He's, he's out here with Smith. He could get five yards if he just fell down. Second down, fires, got a man, that is going to be close to a first down. They continue to battle for the ball comes loose. It's ripped away by Shane Morris. He's racing down the far sideline, and he's going in. Touchdown, Clayton Valley. Wow. So the Clayton Valley defense comes up with their second turnover, and they turn this one into six. Well, they didn't really show they could stop it. <laughs> But they, showed they, they had an answer for it on that one, Tony, because they got another good gain, but that time Morris just ripped the ball out of the receiver's hands and, and went uh, about 50 yards for a touchdown. It's incredible. Boy, so the Clayton Valley defense, after the Northgate defense got the biggest stop of the ball game, Dan, Clayton Valley gets one. They rip it out of the hands of the Broncos and race the other way for a touchdown. And just like that, it's 20 to nothing. Wakefield out of the hold of Raw. The kick is up. The kick is good. And with 6.01 to go here in the first half, it's been all Clayton Valley as they lead Northgate now 21 to nothing. Well, now it's imperative that they not necessarily score, but they need to hold on to the ball. Now they've had two drives where they've turned the ball over right around midfield. Uh, one of them did not cost them. That one did. So, uh, I'll tell you, Tony, it's, a, it's kind of shocking. You know, you, you get to these games and you look at the records and then you, you look at one team. And right now, Clayton Valley, you can just tell their speed, their depth is winning this game. They, they, have, they have more athletes. They have a bigger roster. They have guys that are making plays individually that are winning this football game for them. Now you look at the logs for these teams, Dan, and both of these clubs doing some uh, embarrassing of other teams, uh, well, I guess absolutely. you could say. You look at some of these, these numbers. Uh, Clayton Valley 66 points, 42 to seven over Independence, 62 to nothing over Skyline. They beat Hayward badly, College Park, they ripped them, Ignacio Valley. You look over at Northgate, Dan, Hayward, they beat Livermore bad, uh, Antioch, they crushed them, Mount Diablo, they crushed them, YV and, and, uh, and then College Park after that loss to Concord. And then you start to see, okay, well maybe there is some they're close, these two teams, well, but they've look looked at anything the but so Look far. at Hayward, 49-6, 49-7. Look at Concord, right. lost by two, win by one. You'd think it'd be a little closer right now, but Clayton Valley really came out pumped up here tonight. Here's the kick, taking it about the three, past the 10, past the 15, out across the 20 to about the 22, maybe the 23-yard line. About a 20-yard gain on that return. It'll be a first down as Matt Wang makes the return for Northgate, and the Broncos will have it first and 10 from there. And this is pretty close to their best starting point so far here in the first half. But they just have to sustain a drive now. They've had two, two punts, and then now they've had, now they've had two uh, fumbles. The last one, I guess you'd call a strip, but a fumble laid down on the ground, and then a strip on that last one that went for a touchdown. So this is a big drive for the uh, Broncos. This is it, Dan. Like, this is one of those drives where you say, are we in this game or not? But of course, then you watch the uh, Ducks in Stanford last night and you just never know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Handoff, trying to go up the middle and just a couple of yards there and then finally thrown backwards. Maybe it was a gain and that it was Eric Haynes but met by a host of white shirts and not a whole lot of room that time for Eric on that play. And you can see that Clayton Valley line, the size of that line is starting to take over some of the interior play on the defensive side. They're just bigger. I mean, you look at them out right now, they're probably two to three inches and probably 20, 30 pounds heavier on that side of the ball. All right, second down's a loss of one on that last play by Haynes. Out of the eye formation, they're going to fake it this time. Throw, and that is going to be a beautiful catch. Is that Jake Smith out there? 
Jake Smith, the tight end, and reaching way up in the air to get it about the 34-yard line. And that will be a first down. And Jake Smith, boy, I tell you, that was a great catch that time. Very nice catch. The ball was thrown just a little bit high. Had to go up and get it. Jake Smith coming into the game, 43 catches for 863 yards and 12 touchdowns. So you know he's yeah. had a great year, and he'll probably be an all-league selection here in the uh, BVAL, DVAL. How many VALs do we have? <laughs> See, the hard thing for a guy like me, Tony, is when I played, we were the DVAL. Now this is the DVAL, and out there it's the BVAL. Confusing up, upended, and it's the, probably a loss of a couple getting up off the pile. And that's Richard Peralta, number 27, there defensively. So a very short game, maybe a yard on that play for Northgate. And as you said, Dan, it, it, what Northgate needs to do, they obviously need to get some points. That would obviously help, but just make sure Clayton Valley doesn't get another crack at it here before halftime. About a yard gain on that last carry by the Broncos. It'll bring up third down, second down and nine. Austin back, short drop, fires here to the near side, caught. And that's Eric Haynes who's going to spin and get out across the 50-yard line. And actually Nick Mastrelli, number 23, making that catch. You got 22 and 23, and I take that quick glance, Dan, sometimes I... I well, missed that last part of that, that number, but it was 23 Mistrelli on the nice play. Well, we don't have the, the problem we had last year where Clayton wears their black jerseys with blue numbers, which are virtually impossible yeah, to read. Yeah, tough to see. Red's a little easier with the gold outline, but sometimes you can't see the twos and threes kind of right. the same. But once again, though, Tony, throwing in front of the corners. I mean, yeah. that's been there all night long, and it, I just keep doing it. And you wonder when the uh, pump and go will be there as well. The Working off move. that, the double move. That's Eric Haynes going in motion. They fake it to him. No, actually, they did give it to him. Good fake that time, but uh, Clayton not all that faked up, but five yards going around that uh, far side for Eric Haynes as we tick down to 312 and counting. So still plenty of time here for Northgate to get on the board. Yeah, you can't look back, Tony, at the fact that we're, you've given up 21. You've got to look ahead now, and you've got to say to yourself, if we get seven and, and d going down 21-7, we, we're still in this. We can still come back in this game, but you don't want to give them the ball or you know, not get any points out of this drive. Clayton Valley will get the ball to start the second half. But uh, Northgate trying to march it down here and put it in the end zone and make this one close here at halftime. Fake, looking, fires, and then in and out of the hands of the tended receiver and incomplete. And Austin threw that with some steam on it. Probably should have been caught, however. You know, a little behind the uh, intended receiver that time. I think that was Muller. Kyle Muller, number 44, the tight end. Hey, before the game, my old buddy Dwayne Downing stopped by. Used to play softball with Dwayne back in the day, and uh, his son Drew is on the uh, Broncos team. I just wanted to say hi to him and his family. Austin going to pitch it. Haynes is going to get it to the near side. Picks up a few yards. Still on his feet. And then finally wrestled to the ground. A host of defenders there. And including, let's see, number 46 getting off the bottom of the pile that time. At uh, number 46, Elijah Brion, the first guy to get there. And then with a little then, help of his, yeah, with his, and then his a bunch friends. Of yeah. Up the middle, can he break a tackle, pick up a first down. As gets out across the 40-yard line to about the 36-yard line of Clayton Valley, and that will be a first down for the Broncos. And so a worked. nice drive here to answer. That worked because Clayton Valley sent a guy, looked like a blitz on the, on the uh, left side of their line, right side of Northgates, and that was the hole that Haynes was able to go through to get that first down. 2.22 to go, Tony, here in the half. As the Broncos do have all three of their timeouts left. So plenty of time here. Can the Broncos cash this one in and make this a ball game here at halftime? Haynes up over the middle, spinning away from some people, but able to corral him. But another pretty nice game for Eric Haynes as he gets inside the 35-yard line, Dan. Down to the 34-yard uh, line. A game of about five yards in the play. It'll bring up second down at five. Yeah, Brion and Davis were there for the tackle. You know, Tony, they don't give us a lot of time for the color guy. I think I'm going to demand more color time. <laughs> They're already back in the huddle. 
Yeah, these guys don't huddle up a whole this lot. This isn't do one they? of those ones where you can yeah. talk for like 30 seconds. It's like they're already in the huddle. It's like you have to try to almost figure out what they're going to do as opposed to uh, talk about what they just did. Look at the sideline over there. Look at the gap between the far. Oh, my goodness. Look, I mean, I, I can Nobody's do that. Nobody's out there. Cuts it inside. Cuts it back. It's Mastrelli. He's going to be tackled from up high. Pulled down from behind. If, and you, I was, if you didn't see that on the screen, um, unbelievable, Tony. There, it, they must, there must have been 20 yards between the cornerback and, and Mastrelli on that play. Well, it was Ben Davis, number 16, who finally pulled him down, Dan. But, uh, boy, they lined up. There was nobody out there. There's nobody out there again. And finally, now Shane Moore is starting to creep out over there. Kind of looking in as they're playing his own. Throwing here to the near side of the corner. That is going to be incomplete. Looking for Jake Smith. And uh, Jake Smith was out there along with number 16, Ben Davis, as the pass is incomplete. It'll bring up second down and goal. I mean, there comes a time when, you know, I always wondered this in an NFL game, when you see those kind of gaps. So there's nobody on the planet that can come and play for your team that can step five yards up and still make the stop. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it really, it, your cornerbacks, you know, I mean, it's either that or just the way they, they, they've chosen to play their defense. But you would think that you would at least, you know, a five-yard cushion. In high school, you'd be able to. I mean, neither are Smith and Mastrelli are. They're not speed birds. They're good high school receivers, but they're not going to run by you at, at a five yard distance. Second down and goal. Pitch. Left side. Got a couple of blockers and is going to be thrown out of bounds on the carry that time. Matt Wang. It's going to bring up third down and goal. Well, not a whole lot of room. Had a couple of blockers down, but the further outside that Wang went, there were just white shirts there. It looked like that was a play probably looking to cut that ball back up inside. So here's third down and goal here for the Broncos. Throws over the middle, caught. And this is going to bring up fourth down. Jake Smith's going to make the catch there, Dan. They're going to get inside the five. That will bring up fourth down. They can get a first down, though, Tony, it looks like. At the two-yard line, at least that's where the marker. Well, I thought it was like a goal. There. I thought it was well, a goal to go situation. Look at the marker over there. He's, he's on the eleven-yard line. They still got him up, so apparently he can get a first down. Kyle Lawson looking over to the sideline, getting some. Uh, I'd call a timeout right here. You need to score on this play. Well, yeah. they did. They're just twenty-four seconds ago. They finally do they call did. timeout. So the Broncos started this drive, Dan, at five fifty-four left here in the uh, second quarter uh, from their own 23-yard line following Shane Morris's fumble recovery and TD run from about 50 yards out. That made it 21 to nothing, but a nice answer here for the Broncos and their offense, Dan, but it doesn't mean anything if they can't cash it in. You know, th this has been their most impressive drive, definitely using that... Uh I, I don't know what you want to call it, Tony, what, what they're doing over there. I mean, like I said... and. and if you, if you start that way after the fourth or fifth or sixth time, you got to think you make an adjustment. You know, I mean, literally, they could throw this pass all night, and they have gotten five to ten yards every time they've run it. You know, I'm just saying, it, something's, I mean, you're ahead 21-0, you're not panicking yet. You know, let them score. All right, we still have by two touchdowns. But I'm just saying, if, I don't get why they have that much room. You know, I see that in the, in the NFL sometimes too, Dan, where you, obviously you have the big speed burners. You're, wait, you're worried about the guy well, getting by saying. you. You know, and if you're not well, playing that 2D Jake zone. Smith is a fine you know. high school receiver. He's not Miles Austin. <laughs> Michael Crabtree. <laughs> All right, fourth down. Looks like they can get a first down. About the two-yard line. Throw the ball. Tip. Caught oh. by Wang. Touchdown. North game. And I know that's the call they, they planned, Tony, on that one right there. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to throw it off Zach Smith, and then Wang's going to run behind and make the catch. But that's the kind of thing that sometimes, Tony, can demoralize the team it happened to and really pump up the team that it took advantage of the play. So Wang with the catch. I wonder, does he get an assist? <laughs> 77 yards on the drive. Snap. Kick is up. The kick is good. So with a great drive, a nice bounce back, and a nice answer for the Northgate uh, offense, stand, and a little bit of luck. And it's 21-7 in favor of Clayton Valley. Well, that was one of those uh, just quick passes that, that got on Smith too early. You know, he wasn't, boom, off his hands. Just so happened to bounce right to Wang, who was running right behind him. 
I know that's called a Z bounce go is what that's called. Z bounce go. Although that's what it'll be called Monday when they practice it again. I think that's one of those years ago. I remember in the NFL, remember they had the one you couldn't tip it from one offensive player to the other uh, you without could, a right. defender hitting it in between. The immaculate reception was uh, that exact And play. I'm also thinking that's that one play way back in Super Bowl five as well, if you remember that one. Anyway. Jackie Smith or something like it that. It was just a strange rule that you would have. Like, why would you have that? As if the offense would plan something like that to well, get a, that used an advantage. to be the rule. The ball could not be touched by two consecutive offensive players. Right. I mean, that rule was abolished Thank God. 30 years ago. It was just a ago. silly rule. I mean. But if, for those of you that don't know, in the, the immaculate reception, Franco Harris, a lot of people still will say to this day that the ball was touched by a stealer before Harris. Jack Tatum. Which, yeah, it was touched by Jack. No, or it was touched by Rocky Blyer, a stealer, which would have made the pass incomplete and the Raiders would have won the game. Frenchy Fuqua. Frenchy Fuqua, right. Rocky Blyer, Terry Bradshaw, one of one those, of those guys, guys that's bald that was playing for the Steelers <laughs> back then. 20 seconds to go here in the first half. 21 to 7 in favor of Clayton Valley. Northgate has answered. And now Clayton Valley uh, here from the 20 yard line. 25, 30, 35. Mm. And up close to the 40 yard line. So a nice return by uh, number 21. Luis Ramos making that return, but uh, just uh, 13 seconds to go here in the half. So Northgate got on the board. They got to be feeling a little bit better about themselves. They're going to have to figure out a way. You know, actually, Tony, you know, if you go back, after 14 nothing, they made a stop. They did get a stop defensively. And That's basically right. they gave them that, that third touchdown. And remember, they were moving the ball after that as so they well. Have started and then they got the, the ball. turnover. They have started moving the ball. But what, what did we say early? It's going to be the team that makes the most mistakes. And right now, the Northgate's made the most glaring mistakes. Now, Clayton Valley has not played scintillating on offense, really, the last couple of, of downs. As a matter of fact, they had the one where they were fourth and halfway to Rocco's Pizzeria, by the way. We sent over a delicious pizza for us. Today. Rocco's. See how I threw that in there? Rocco's Restaurante and Pizzeria. <laughs> and the corner of uh, Oak Grove and Ignacio Valley Road. Delicious pizza. Thanks very much for the crew meal, guys. Rocco, uh, they have some. Have you ever had the barbecue chicken one? You know, I haven't. I just, oh. I get the pizza and salad every time. It's, well, it's a barbecue chicken pizza. Oh, boy, that sounds delicious. With Sierra Nevada. Oh, my Lord. Now, for some of you younger viewers, you're going to have to have it with a Coca-Cola. But... <laughs> It's, yeah, it's quite the idyllic. And they have some really good pasta over there, too. So, you know, I don't think we have to tell many people in this area about Rocco's. It's usually yeah, pretty packed know. every time I go in there. But we'll tell them about it anyway. Yeah, it was packed again tonight. It's one of those places, Dan, where you, you go up there and you just you can smell it before you get there. It's like, mm, boy, that smells delicious. All right, the last uh, 13 seconds here. Of the half, it's been all Clayton Valley really until that last drive. Clayton is going to run a play here, throw the ball deep down the field. This one is going to be knocked away and incomplete. Looks like number three on that one. Steve yeah. Cuneo able to knock that one down, throw it a long way, leaving seven seconds to go. So Harrison, a 16 yard TD run. Vicema, the two-point uh, catch on the conversion. Taylor, a one-yard run. Shane Morris, that fumble, uh, he ripped that ball loose and returned that one for a touchdown. And then Wang off the tip, a six-yard TD catch. And that is our scoring summary. Throwing deep down the far side. There's a man out there. He's got it. And he's going to be dragged out of bounds wow. with no time on the clock. So they get the huge play from Clayton Valley, but they're out of time, and that's the way the half ends. That's called a stat patter, Tony, is what that is. <laughs> that's going to look good for the passing statistics, but it doesn't mean anything really in the game. 21-7 <laughs> halftime. We'll take a break and be back to Northgate High School right after this. Easy and convenient. You're good to go. Now that was easy.
Hi, welcome to Inside Center Rep. My name is Carrie Lederer, and I'm the curator of exhibitions here at the Bedford Gallery. Hi there, welcome to Get Lit. decided to run for the city council. We live in a world surrounded by cigarette butts. They're the most littered item in the world. Cigarette butts are toxic and don't biodegrade. They travel in storm drains to end up harming our water supply and poisoning wildlife. The solution is simple. Put your cigarette butts where they belong in receptacles. Keep Walnut Creek clean. All right, back to Northgate High School. Uh, moments away from starting a third quarter play. Anthony Schultz along with Dan Wall. Interesting first half, Dan, 21 to seven after two quarters here with Clayton Valley ahead. And uh, at first it looked like we didn't think Northgate was gonna be able to stop them. And it turns out Northgate was able to stop them, but then it was the Clayton Valley defense taking advantage of the Northgate offense. Well, we've had four different touchdown uh, scores tonight. Harrison had an 18 yard run. They got Clayton on the board. They had a two point conversion that was good. Then Taylor with the run and a failed kick made it 14-0. Then the strip from Morris and the 48-yard uh, run back for a touchdown, 21-0. At that point, it looked like Clayton was dominating the game, but uh, Northgate got back into it and had a nice sustained drive right before the half. It, uh, uh, that ball was confirmed. It went off with Smith's helmet, caught by Wang, and uh, they had the touchdown, 21-7. So basically, Northgate's uh, way of thinking would be we have to stop them on this first uh, possession of the second half and get the ball back and score. You come back to 21-14 midway through the third quarter and you, you're going to feel like you have a shot. So we talked about the Division II standings as we look ahead toward the NCS Casa Grande of Petaluma 9-0 and on top of the Division II, Dan. The Gauchos at Cardinal Newman in Santa Rosa tonight. Cardinal Newman 7-2. Good looking game there. Of course, Northgate at 8-1 here against Clayton Valley. Montgomery of Santa Rosa 8-1. The Vikings at Windsor Windsor four and five, so they're in that mix as well. Miramani uh, in that group at seven and two, so a lot of good teams and all those teams, of course, headed toward the playoff. Who's going to get that number one seed, Dan? And part of that, uh, part of that scenario is going to be determined here tonight. Well, it, uh, if things turn out the way they are, if Clayton Valley wins this game, Casa Grande wins, it'll be they'll be one and two, and then you know, you know, the team you mentioned though, Tony, that I that probably gives some teams fits is Concord. Concord should go out seven and three if they win tonight and uh, you know look at they scored 48 points against Clayton Valley last week they wow. beat Northgate I mean that's one of those teams that you look at and go they're down there in the fifth or sixth seed you don't really want to be playing them in the first round that's a team that could upset you There's some interesting things developments happening through high school football as we wind down the regular season a very entertaining regular season you know you mentioned Harris Ross of Pittsburgh and Pitt, of course, having another good season. And, and that uh, one game uh, a few weeks back, it ended up scoring what seven touchdowns in a ball game well, for was, Pitt. Uh, yeah, that was against Monta Vista back what? early in the year. It, at Monta Vista, yeah. and uh, boy, Dan, I think he did most of that damage after the intermission. He had only I think it's just two in, touchdowns in the second half. And just it went off in that second half. So, so some still some you know really good teams around here. And, of course, uh, we had to get a couple of games in. Well, we had an interesting game tonight, De La Salle in California. Now, California is probably the only team in that league that can put a real challenge to De La Salle. We'll see how, how they fare. But uh, 
you know, I, I'm not familiar with this one piece. I, I meant to look it up, and I, I didn't. But does De La Salle even play in the Division One tournament anymore? Do they just go straight to the championship game and the qualifying for the state? <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I mean, just, you, know, you know, Dan. It's all I do like know, they have their own rules, you know. All I do know is about De La Salle. And you know, the, you hear a lot of people say, "Oh, well, they get they take players from here and there, and they get all the good players." Da, da, da. Which is true. They certainly have an advantage in that way. But, you know, Dan, they play so many teams that are like them, that draw from a huge area. That well, bring they play a lot of some them. teams like them. But when they do play those teams, Dan, what usually happens? They still win by They 40. still win. Yeah. I mean, so. Sarah's the only one that was in, within seven. And Clayton Valley only lost, I believe it was 34 to 17 to, uh, uh, to De La Salle. So they were in the game. You know, and Clayton Valley was the last team. I think they're the last team in this area to be ahead of them at halftime. That's how bad the stats are, right? Who was the last team to be ahead at halftime? <laughs> Clayton Valley. I, and then they had the one Boy, tie. Boy, you got to dig deep, don't back you? In, when uh, Ivankovic was at uh, Ignacio, coaching when Ignacio was really a powerhouse back about 10 years ago, they had a tie. And that's it around here. All right, Sam Dale for Northgate getting set to kick off as we resume action here and start the second half of play. 21 to seven in favor of Clayton Valley. And the third quarter is underway, and Dale puts a huge leg into this one, and we'll have the automatic touchback, and that one bounces in and out of the end zone. Clayton Valley begins this first drive of the third quarter from their own 20-yard line. Well, we'll see what they come out with here, Tony. The first drive was Miles Harrison left and Miles Harrison right and Miles Harrison right down the field, and then all of a sudden they started using some of their other guys, showing their depth. They really haven't been successful passing the ball at all where, where Northgate has. So we'll see what they do here in the second half. They talked about Harrison, the good vision, pretty good speed. They're going to hand a raw going up the middle. It bounces off a tackler. Gets out across the 20, near the 25-yard line, about four yards or so there on first down. It will bring up second down at six. A little counter that time back to the left side. And you talked about Harrison you know, coming in, Dan. Uh, you know, runs a 4-8-40. Does get caught from behind a lot, Coach Murphy told me. That's one thing he wanted him to work on with some of those, the power lifting and the squat thrust and things like that. They had to improve his speed a little bit. And boy, wouldn't that be scary if he was even faster. Kind of run the same play here, and it's raw again, and he's going to get a first down. Out across the 30-yard line. That comes out from the uh, from the near side, Dan, and they hand it off to him going right up the middle and back-to-back -back plays. He picks up good yardage. Harrison that time, Tony. You know, he's just being used as a decoy right now. I wonder if it's fun to be a decoy because the first time they had the ball, he was he had it every time, and now it's basically a fake to him. And now, look, this time they're in set, they're in the uh, the old almost hot potato pitch formation. Harrison with room this time, breaks a tackle, breaks another out across the 50, 45 into Bronco territory, down to about the 41-yard line. At that time, Danny had space, able to pick his way through defenders. And there you get a good look at him there. And a beautiful run by Harrison. Another first down here for Clayton Valley. That time he had the blocks and had some room. And then, of course, with him, it seems like, you know, some guys get the blocks and they get so much yardage and they have some room and they get so much yardage. But then he creates more yardage when, at the end of the run. Kind of like, reminds you of Frank Gore, kind of like that. Once he gets down in that secondary, he can just take guys for 5, 10 more yards. 23 yards on that carry. Going to get a hand behind blockers with a whole bunch of room right up the middle. And nobody to break the tackle here, and he's right into the end zone. Touchdown, Clayton Valley. Wow, 42 yards, and he didn't even get touched. Four plays to start this next drive, and that is a touchdown for Harrison. And Clayton Valley on the board again here. Well, that wasn't how the halftime speech went. <laughs> if you're uh, the defensive coordinator for the for the Broncos, unfortunately. That's a Ben Ballard. He uh, they were trying to stop him and get him back in the game. And uh, that time they ran a couple of those uh, little counter left side uh, runs to Raw. And then right up the middle with Harry. That, that time right there, there was a hole up the middle. The blocking was great, and no one even touched him. And the kick is just over the crossbar. It is good. And there the score is now 28 to 7 in favor of Clayton Valley. 10 24 to go here in the third. And you talk about those guys up front, you know, Carter. And these guys get off the ball so well. Max Connor, coach's nephew, all league last year. 
Dylan Jew, second team all league a year ago. And you saw a couple times that time, Dan, when uh, when Harrison got the ball, initially going across the line, he was a lot of space. Oh, well, the second uh, run there, that last run for the touchdown, you, there was about a five-yard gap. Yeah, he didn't have to break a tackle no. that last run. I don't know if you noticed on that field goal, Tony, it looked like the ball got shot around the goal line before it went over. It looked like a, someone, a sniper or something from the... Uh, yeah, it looked like pulled light. a string on it almost. Yeah, it was it was hung up yeah, in the yeah, air and barely made pushed, it. And then it just barely made it over there. Special teams in high school football. It's always a But I'll tell you, Dan, hasn't it, the place kicking gotten so much better in the last several years than it used it's to be? It's gotten better, but Remember? there was a golden age of kicking in this area when Eric Johnson played at Antioch and went to Stanford and, and, and was a kicker. And then they had a they had a family out there in Antioch. I forget their names, but like six guys in a row. They're all brothers, and they all were kickers, and they could all kick 40-yard field goals. Wow. I guess it just depends on if you, you have a kicker or not. This one kind of punched here to the near side. Caught, fumbled at 25, and then finally covered up at about the 28-yard line. So they'll pick up a couple of yards on that. But lucky to maintain possession are the Broncos. They'll take over there first down and 10, trailing again by 21. Ten twenty-three to go here in the third, and now uh, Northgate again trailing by three touchdowns. So from their own 28-yard line, let's see if they can answer one more time here. Need another drive here through the Broncos. Here's Smith coming in motion now, going to plant himself on the uh, far side, tight to the formation. Eric Haynes tripped up in the backfield, regains his balance, and then caught and after he picks up about three yards somebody was knifing through there able to trip him up just a little bit before he could get a good head of steam and then the rest of the Clayton Valley took care of it Brendan Crabb at number 52 coming up there to make that stop he, he was at the bottom and usually I give credit to the guys at the bottom whether yeah. he made the tackle or looks not. like these guys the, fell on him it so. looks like he's the first guy we'll there give him, we'll give him credit Wide receiver spread to either side. And the handoff, give it to the uh, first man through. That is uh, number 32, Dimitri Bukas. Another one of these guys that have some pretty good uh, numbers. Now we've got an injured Clayton Valley player. So we'll take time out here trying to get a fix on who that is. But uh, clearly shaken up here. We can only hope that he's going to be okay. So an injury timeout coming here with 9.33 to go here in the third quarter. A 28-7 Clayton Valley lead. You know, Tony, it's... Uh, as, as I was watching one of our games that we did, and I, I had just, we'd made a, a, a comment about the fact that there's no injuries in the NFL anymore because there's no hitting in the NFL anymore because, you know, you can't hit anyone. There, there are some, there was one last week that it like defied any logic whatsoever. It, it, it's like the guy didn't even touch the guy and he got a personal foul penalty. So it is getting rough and then you don't really see that out here. Unless a guy really launches him. You know, most of the personal fouls you see in high school football come on the sideline. You know what I mean? It's usually some rambunctious kid being kind of stupid for that one play and he throws the guy out into the trap, which we've seen in some places. Good thing to see uh, him up, well they're actually carrying him off so he might have a serious uh, leg injury so we hope that uh, our player that, that player is okay it wasn't I think that's 46 might have been Elijah Brion yeah I think it was we were 46 and we can only hope that he's going to be okay had to be helped off the field as Dan alluded to you don't see a lot of that launching you know where you're seeing a lot of that launching stuff now is in college football where you see the guy you know die and that's where you're getting guys like I think last night in one of the games someone got ejected and then they reinstated him in a game, I don't think it was. I've never Oregon, seen that before. Been, oh yeah, they they took it back after seeing that he he pushed him instead of used his helmet. So it's really getting interesting. They reviewed that they play. Review, they reviewed a personal foul. <laughs> Tie formation again. Oh, that was a hot little pitch. pitch. There, there it is. Yeah. That is the hot potato pitch. Eric Haynes lost the football. Who's got it? Clayton Valley says they do. What do the referees say? No signal by the referees yet. Looks like they're nope. going to mark the ball back across the forty where Haynes originally got to before the ball came loose. 
Clayton Valley fans didn't like that. Well, Tony, if you ever, if there was ever an advertisement for don't watch the kids on the field, who has the ball? <laughs> there it was. You'd have thought that it was New Year's Eve, but no. It was, it was Northgate's all the time. Running this again. Mastrelli's going to get it around that right side. He's got some room. Breaks a tackle. Stiff arm breaks another tackle. Keeps his feet. Gets across the Clayton Valley 40. Inside the 40. Down near the 36-yard line. So here's Northgate, Dan, on the move. Nice 22-yard run. That time he had space on the outside. Good blocking on that side and then broke a couple of tackles. Look, look at that double wing formation. Yeah. It looks like they're running some good plays out well, of you that can see formation, they're in that Dan. Tight. Now, this is the old traditional tight double wing with the two tight ends, and they're, they're almost like they're in their huddle right now. Here's Haynes coming in motion. They're going to give it to Masarelli. Going to go up the middle, and Nick is going to have himself good yardage going over that uh, right side, the defensive left side, Dan. And that's going to be another good game, short of the first down by about a couple. So an eight-yard gain there on first down. Well, that's a staple play of this offense is to fake the pitch to the, the back going on, around to the left and then hand off underneath to the right. That You can see Mastrelli right there set up in that same uh, position. And Haynes on the other side. Pitch it this time. Haynes over the left side. Eric Raw came up and really hit him up high to knock him down. And that got an ooh from the crowd. But that will be a first down, and Haynes back up. That looks like a okay. hit from Monday Night Raw, not Tanner Raw. If you watch that fabulous wrestling, wrestling program. No, yeah. haven't got a chance Tanner to see a whole like lot. That, but yeah, so. Boy, he really took him down hard that time. But, but a clean hit with his arms. Was clean. Haynes no worse for wear as the uh, Broncos back to the line of scrimmage. Another first down. That was Haynes the play. up the middle again. That was the play, Tony, where Mistrelli took the first handoff, and then he handed it off to Haynes. So you've got a lot of a lot of stuff going on in there, and you've got to be able to pick out where the ball is. You know, the only problem with this offense, we've said it every time we've done it, you get down by three touchdowns, it takes a while to score. Yeah, it does. They nearly had the third turnover of the game for the Broncos early on this drive when Haynes had appeared to have fumbled. But the two other ones cost them one drive, and of course cost them that one touchdown when Morris returned it for a Clayton Valley TD. They're going to throw out wide here. The ball is going to be in out of the hands of Nick Mistrelli, the intended receiver. And I think that's Xavier Crawford there, number 38, defensively for Clayton Valley. That was very close to a backwards pass too, Tony. That's why Zapanta picked the ball up and was looking back to see what the refs were doing, but they had blown it dead, but very close. Third down now upcoming here for the Broncos. Third down, call it about six. Austin, everybody looking at their wristbands with those cheat sheets. Interesting formation here. Austin with the fake. And now he completes his pass. And that is going to be Kyle Muller, the tight end. The 6'1", 180 pound tight end slash linebacker. And he's going to have himself a first down. So here come the Northgate Broncos, Dan. Yeah, Muller got hurt on that play when he got hit. That was a beautiful play action, a fake there that time. And it sealed the, uh, the line, froze them. And then your tight end's able to come up from the far side underneath and make that catch. Nice gain there, uh, first and goal. But uh, hopefully Muller's OK after yeah. that injury. Clearly favoring his left leg as he's being helped off the field down, hobbling off as Muller. But he did pick up a first down as he goes out of the ball game now. And Austin checking with the uh, brain trust over on the near side of the field and the Broncos sideline. And now Austin back under center. First down. Mastrelli, I believe, got it going around the right side. And Nick is going to have a little bit of room. He's going to get down near that goal line. Yeah, the only thing that would be frustrating, Tony, is you're the quarterback, right? You've been playing now for four years. Every day in the summer, you know, your girlfriend hates you because you never go to the movies. All the And you never, you can't even call a play. It's always got to come in from the sideline. Can I call one play, Coach? <laughs> Second down for the Broncos. Pitch back, and this one's going to be blown dead. Clayton called timeout. Timeout, Clayton Valley. Yes, it is a Clayton Valley timeout. As the Eagles want to talk it over, well, one thing that the, the Broncos have proven here in the last couple of drives, Dan, they can move the ball here against Clayton Valley. But they have to stop them. Yes. That's the big thing right now. They had their, 
That, the, right now, the big swing play in this game is the strip and the fumble return for a touchdown. Because you take that away, it's 21-7. If they score, it's 21-14. They have a game. But that, those couple mistakes they made in the second quarter is what's really uh, put them behind the eight ball right here. But, you know, still 18 minutes to play, Tony. But they need to score on this drive. Anything we haven't talked about? <laughs> Talk about that Clayton Valley defense. They play that 4-4. The line, Dan, has played very well this year. When I talked to Coach Murphy earlier in the week, he said that, you know, the linebacking core, Dan, they're a little bit young, but they are getting better. And it's a situation where you kind of have, uh, you know, your offense kind of leads the charge, but, of course, at some point in the season, no matter how good you are on one side of the ball, Dan, you have to have the other side do something. Right. And, of course, Clayton Valley has done well. It's not as though they're a porous defense, but it certainly has been much more about the offense than it has been the defense this year. Well, actually, they've won, Clayton's won eight straight since that loss. And they're, they're, they kind of remind you of, uh, in the last three years, similar record to Campo. You know, you mentioned Campo's like now 32-3 and three in the last 35 games. They're 31-4. and four. Mastrelli, no, they're going to fake it and go the other way. Are they over? Still the pile being pushed. No single from the officials just yet. The Broncos thought they got over. Let me see how good the judgment is after that fumble turn. So it's going to be just short. Yep. They're done. They're going to unpile them here, about a half yard to Pater. He's going to bring up a third down here for the Broncos. And from where at, Tony, it looks like the ball is in the end zone. Yeah, from the, the nose of the football, just short of that goal line. Here comes Kyle Austin trying to hear. Now back over calling this play at the line of scrimmage. Looks like the double wing again. Haynes, and now they're going to blow this offside. one dead. And let's see. <laughs> I think Clayton was offside. It's going to be tough to go half the distance from this point in the field. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, yeah, really. I mean, what do you do? Or was it the Broncos? Austin seemed to be pretty unhappy after that, after he heard that call. But I think he's unhappy because they scored and it doesn't count. <laughs> Or maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah, that's why I think he's unhappy because it's well, it's like in the, in the NFL, if you're offside, the play counts. If you can you can decline it. Here, once you're offside, they blow it dead. So, that, they got in, and now they have to do it again. There it is, Kyle, coming over. And you know, he's got the play. Everybody checks their uh, their sheets and their wrists, ready to go. Can they punch it in? Haynes, did he he's get in. there? Yep. Bounces off, goes the other way, and now he's in touchdown, Bronco. Did he, I wonder, does he get two? Because he was in the first time, and then he, he went back and got another one. Well, Tony, uh, they, they did what they had to do. They went down the field on a nice drive. They went back to the old double wing, traditional double wing, a lot of hot potato pitches on that one. I wish we had, like, a, a graphic where we could show you, and we actually have a hot potato to show you why we call it the hot potato pitch. <laughs> But uh, now they're back in it. They get this extra point. They're down two touchdowns with 454 going in the third, but simply have to stop Clayton Valley now. Now Clayton went right down the field on their first drive with the ball, went right down the field in the first drive of the third quarter and stumbled a little bit after that. So let's see where they are when they get the ball back in. And the point after is up and good. A 72-yard drive by the Broncos has cut the lead again to two touchdowns. It's 28 to 14 in favor of Clayton Valley. They're gonna get the ball back here. And again, Dan, that's the, that really is the $64,000 question. Can they get Clayton Valley stopped, at least stopped consistently? But the Broncos, Dan, a couple of big drives. We just talked about that 72 yard, 72 yarder. And then of course, earlier in that uh, first half, they had a 77 yarder and uh, and Wang got the six-yard TD catch off the tip ball. So they have proved that they can sustain some drives here. And now they're going to get another crack at it here on defense against this very tough Clayton Valley offense. Well, you know, Tony, it's not just like stopping Clayton. They really haven't stopped Harrison. They have stopped Clayton Valley when, they, when they've decided. It's almost like Clayton Valley has kind of stopped themselves. Because when they run Harrison, they've went right down the field. But when they use other guys, it takes them a little longer. He, they, don't, they don't have the speed the, and the escapability that, that Harrison has. So we'll see who gets the ball here. All right, Broncos getting set to kick off. And with their offense, why wouldn't you maybe try an onside kick or something? They tend to get to the 50 in a, a play or two. 
And you think to yourself, Dan, maybe you'd want to steal a possession here to give yourself a better chance, but uh, we'll see. It's Clayton Valley defenders. Let's see how far they back up on the approach here by Sam Dale. And almost not at all. They're almost as if they're expecting something like that, Dan. Pooch kick taking it about the 25, 30, 35, out of the clear, 40, 45, cross midfield, 30, tripped oh. up and inside the 25, down to about the 23-yard line, and a huge return by Clayton Valley on the kickoff. It's number 26, who we have, I don't think we've called that number tonight, Chris Freeman who took that kickoff and went right up the middle. It's a big hole for him to run through. About 51 yards on that return, Dan, and the Clayton Valley special teams coming up with a big play. Yeah, and especially now, you would have said the free, the onside kick would have been a great idea. <laughs> they only got the ball in the 40-yard line. Yeah. Well, the Broncos backs to the wall defensively again. From the 23, throw, man open, and it's going to be incomplete. Looking for Harrison, Dan, on that far side at about the 10-yard line. That one wasn't even close. Harrison was wide open. You know, Tony, we don't have a view, shot of this, but it's amazing how many people are standing down on the, the right sideline down here. I don't know if Ron uh, can get a shot of that, but, man, there are people just jammed into the right side of the Northgate stands. There's people up on the hill outside, and it's like a Tightwad Hill junior version. Handoff, Raw up the middle with room. He's going to have a first down. And Raw, good yardage there. They've run that a number of times. That little counter down, they just kind of pitch it to him or hand it to him. He comes out from the near side and goes right up the middle. And every time they run it, they seem to get good yardage. That, that other than the Harrison play, has been the, their best play of the night, whereas Northgates has obviously been the outside pass. There you see it. There's Ron getting yeah, the shot. Nice Look job, Ron. Yeah. There you go. There are a lot of people. A lot of people here. Well, this game, now, you know, it's amazing. The Ten years ago, there might have been 200 people at Lost Madonna's College watching this game. And now you've got 5,000 people watching it on a Friday night. It's, it's great to see it. Taylor to Raw. Again, that same play. Going to be taken down here after gaining and picking up a few more. And that looked like it was uh, Jake Smith coming up to make the tackle. We have a penalty, I think, on the play procedure on Clayton Valley. Legal motion. Legal procedure, the call against Clayton here coming at 3.53. We'll pick up the laundry on the field and mark this one off against Clayton Valley. So a break there for Northgate. And Northgate, Dan, had the two turnovers, nearly had the third. And one thing we haven't seen so far is a Clayton Valley turnover. Northgate would love to get one of those right here. Clayton Valley, the, the only place they've really shot themselves in the foot is on some penalties that they've had. Here's another one where they had a close to a first down. Now it's third down. Third down, call it six. Harrison going to get it. Picks up the first down. Cuts back. Harrison in head. Touchdown, Clayton Valley. And again, Harrison gets it again, Danny. You, you talked about it earlier. Can they stop Harrison? And right now, the answer is no. no. That's his third touchdown of the night. That's his 21st touchdown this year. I've got to be over 100 yards now rushing. And uh, he's just unstoppable. Like I said, once he gets into the open field, he's hard to catch. And once you get him out there, too, he's hard to bring down. Snap, hold, kick is good. And it just seems like all night long, Dan, as the uh, scoreboard shows, 35 to 14, 3.33 to go here in the third quarter. And again, it just seems like most of the night, Dan, kind of the big brother, little brother type of thing with the at uh, Northgate at an arm's length right exactly. now for Clayton Valley. They just can't get over there. They can't get that break they need to get back into the ball game. They gave Clayton Valley that big break back in the first half, and they haven't been able to get it back. They've actually, you take away the, uh, you know, the, those early 21 and that, it's a 14-14 game. It's very even over the past 15, 20 minutes of the game. But that early part where they couldn't stop them and then the, the turnover for the touchdown, that, that's really where we're at right now. It's a difference in the game. And you know, really for Northgate to really have a chance to win, I don't think they can win this game with three more drives. 
they need to score on a 75-yard pass on the next right. one. You know what I mean? They need to get hit quick and then get the ball back before the, we get to the fourth quarter. And they did do that in that San Marin game, if you remember. They had this big 70-yard well, pass that won the game. Turned out to be one of the great football games of the high school season. So Clayton Valley getting set to kick off here once again. And again, back up by three touchdowns. And you talked about it, Dan. You know, that last drive for the Northgate, they went to that uh, double wing formation. Can they afford to do that again? And it took them a long time to score. They did score, but they just don't have that kind of time now, Dan. They've got to get some quick scores and then stop Clayton Valley on defense. Out here, then tackle down about the 18, maybe 19 yard line. It's about 17 yards on that return. That was Jake Smith. On the return for the Broncos. So they take over there first and 10 with 3.28 to go here in the quarter. And they're back, it looks like, uh, with a running back they're out of the uh, double wing, which was pretty successful for them on the last uh, possession. But so if you're going to play that style, Dan, with the way Clayton Valley's offense is going and how long it's going to take the Northgate offense to produce those points. They are going to absolutely need some takeaways from that Clayton Valley offense if they're going to have a chance to win this game. Throw it out on that swing. And it's going to be a pretty nice game getting out across the 25-yard line, about six yards on the play. Uh, Richard Peralta came up to uh, make the tackle. Matt Wang there on the reception for Northgate. Bring up second down at about four. Here's Jake Smith, he and Wang going to switch sides. And once again, look at the, uh, you can't see near, but uh, the, the split from the uh, cornerback to the receiver, about 10 yards. So, But you're not going to get a big gain unless the, the corner misses on the tackle. If you can run it outside, maybe. That's maybe what they'll look for in one of these plays on this possession. They run a draw this time. They're going to hand off, left side, cuts it back. And the football comes loose, and it's going to be covered by Clayton Valley. Is this one going to be a fumble? It looks like it is going to be a fumble. Clayton Ball, third turnover of the ball game by the Northgate offense. And Clayton going to get this one. Picked up there by number 58. That's Jax Carter. Also plays on the offensive line. So Jack Carter, Jack's able to come up with that one. And, boy, talk about uh, the Clayton defense. They've come up big, too. They've scored a touchdown. They've taken it away three times, nearly four times. You got the, the big play that last uh, uh, after that last kickoff from the, uh, the special teams, Dan, on the return. And we know how good the offense has been. It's just been one of those complete football games here by Clayton Valley. They're going to run the same play that, that they were running to Raw. Instead, it's going to be Dominguez, number four, with the carry. And he's going to actually lose a yard on that play. It will bring up second down. Yeah, Northgate broke that down good at the line of scrimmage. But, you know, the thing I was thinking about when you're talking about the turnovers is they hit hard, too. When you, you yeah. hit a guy, you saw that the secondary hitting, the first guy who wraps, they're getting hit. And that's where a lot of the fumbles are coming in here. No, it's not just like, you know, the Broncos are just dropping the ball. and They are getting stung hard. And really, those, for, those turnovers are being forced. Harrison up the middle. Harrison breaks a tackle, breaks another, makes the cutback. Harrison's still on his feet, and he's going in. Touchdown, Clayton Valley. Unbelievable. 42 Yikes. yards again. Unreal. Fourth touchdown, second 42-yard run in this quarter. And if yeah. that, that is a highlight reel for him to send to whatever college he wants to send it to, but it showed his ability to get through the hole, his ability to get into the open, his ability to throw a, a, a tackler just away from him, and then the ability to run by everybody. That was an amazing run right there. Third touchdown of the quarter, fourth of the football game. Give him 22 overall now. And here's the PAT, snap, hold, kick is good, no good. <laughs> it looked like that one went through to I me. <laughs> That's why we're up here and they're down there. But with 155 to go, it's now 41 to 14. And on those three turnovers, Dan, two of them turned into touchdowns. One directly by Shane Morris, and the other one after the offense was able to move it. And uh, 
Mr. Harrison, another big run wow. for a score. And again, that one, you know, we saw the one where he didn't have to break any tackles. That one he broke three and then made a nice cutback once he got inside the 10. Well, now I was talking about him being over 100 yards. Well, he's got 120 yards just on the four touchdown runs, Tony. So he's got to be getting close to 200 yards. Four touchdowns tonight. That's 22 for the year. He's going to end up in the regular season Yikes. with probably oh, close to 1,300 yards rushing. Unreal. And so we've seen uh, the cream of the crop of this league tonight. Harrison having a great game. Haynes having uh, probably not his best game so far uh, as a Bronco. But, uh, you know, once again, you're playing a team over there that is uh, one of the turned in one of the powers of right. this area, really. When you think about now, you think about Campolindo, you think about Clayton Valley, and you think about De La Salle. Those are, and, you know, Deer Valley and Pittsburgh still kind of in there with California. Those are probably the big six now. Yeah, it's Justin Lowell in his sixth year, Dan. Of course, they've Turn this program completely around. Remember back in 2007, it was a Darian Owens' five and five record. Ted Tellian was here from 04 through 06. They were four and 26 in that span. So you see what Justin Lowell has done. And then Herc Party, of course, had the uh, Clayton Valley Eagles before this as the whistle blows this one dead, Dan. And Herc, they had a lot of success uh, in the Herc Party era. And then since Murphy has taken over in his second year, as you said, Dan, they've emerged now as one of the powers of the league, looking for their second straight DVAL championship. Looks like they're going to get that here tonight. Well, it's funny when you look at, you know, Herc came from Pittsburgh, so he had that successful run at Pittsburgh. Still the last coach to be in De Northern California yeah. to beat De La Salle in that classic playoff game back in 1991. Probably the greatest high school game I've ever seen. Then... He comes to Clayton, and Murphy, of course, had a great run at Ignacio, went to Clovis East, came back here, and he's the next guy in line to, to coach Clayton Valley. And, of course, uh, you can see this team is a, just watching them warm up. You can see they, they almost have that same aura of a De La Salle when De La Salle was in their heyday out here. This one picked up at about the 30, raced across the 40 to about the 43, 13 yards on that return. You know, Tony, I remember watching De La Salle warm up back in the day, standing on the sidelines and looking at guys like Amani Toomer and going, he's going to play in the NFL one day. You could just see it. Aaron Taylor, he's going to play in the NFL one day. Super Bowl, Chris champion. Simon, DJ Williams. These guys are all going to play in the NFL one day. You could just see it. Now, I don't know if any of the guys on Clayton are going to end up there because they maybe don't have that extra push in the speed department or they're not as big but they do have that kind of aura that they know they're going to win. They, they know that they're a good team. Screen pass. Haynes got a blocker. Cuts it back. Across the 45 and off of the 40 yard line of Clayton Valley. First time we've seen that screen pass today to one of the backs. We kind of saw that bubble screen with the wide receivers earlier. But uh, now we see it to the back and that works out pretty well as he gets out to the 40 yard line. So a nice game there on a first down. Well, that's the kind of play you need to use for Haynes. Haynes is really good once he gets past the line of scrimmage. He can make nice cuts. He's got good speed. Uh, you know, sometimes I think they, when they have trouble it's when they're playing a tough physical team up front that can take the ball away like they, they played Valley House. Haynes over the right side, kind of runs into his own man who's being pushed into the backfield by those Clayton Valley defenders. As you see them all unpile there. So Clayton Valley, there, strong at the point of attack that time. It'll bring up second down after a, a short gain, maybe a yard or so on the play. Well, you notice like on that play, Tony, there's no easy runs. Those two to three yard runs, you're getting hit by four guys. So you know there's gonna be some bruised up uh, bodies out there after tonight's game. Second down to nine. Nick Masterelli split wide here to the near side. That's Jake Smith in the slot here to the near side. Austin barking out the singles. Man in motion. Going to go with the reverse. Cut it up, and then Wang is going to be taken down by Xavier Crawford, number 38, after a couple of yard gain. And Peralta was there, too, and that's the tackle. Peralta low, Crawford high. There's always two guys, and I think that's why they get some of the uh, turnovers and some of the tackles in that they, that they do because they're, they're very well coached and, and are hitting guys. You know, one thing, too, we are talking about them playing off the line of scrimmage. You know, that might just be Coach Murphy's way. He's saying, I'll give you, I'll give you the five yards. I'm not going to give you 
right. 50 well, yards. And know? right now, that, that is a perfect strategy right now. Well, right now care. it is. But, I mean, even early in the game, as the uh, third quarter comes to an end, early in the game, you, you wouldn't think that a guy would. But maybe he's saying, I know I can score five touchdowns against right. this team, so I'm going to make sure they can't score five touchdowns. I'll let them have the ball, but we're going to stop them eventually, and that's what's happening. Now. All right, the end of the third quarter with Clayton Valley firmly in control here by three touchdowns, but the Broncos on the move again, Dan, trying to cut it to a two-touchdown lead once again. Fourth quarter coming up right here on Walnut Creek TV. Walnut Creek TV, TV comes home, www.walnutcreektv.org. Comcast Channel 28, Channel 26 in Rossmore, is down Channel 29, and on AT&T Uverse, Channel 99, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, YouTube.com, City of Walnut Creek, Facebook.com slash Walnut Creek TV, Twitter.com slash Walnut Creek Gov. So check us out. That's Walnut Creek TV. Are they on Google Chrome? I, I use Google Chrome. <laughs> I think that's just a search engine. I think it's it is a search engine. I, I was thing. just trying yeah. to look hip. You know. There we go. Throws out here to Wang. That is incomplete. Crawford nearly had a chance to catch that, number 38. Going for Wang, who was lined up in the slot over here to the near side. Led him a little bit too much, Dan. And that pass is incomplete. So you're looking at the situation here, Dan, and even though there's a full quarter left, needing three touchdowns, you got to figure at some point if Northgate is able to take this ball across into the end zone again, you'd have to try to come up with maybe an onside kick, oh. some way to steal a possession or two here to try to win this game. Wang out of the slot, makes the catch, and he's going to push forwards for a nice game there. Peralta there on the stop along with number two, Ryan Cooper there for Clayton Valley. They're running their uh, secondary back even farther now, so they're giving them the underpass, but they're taking away the long pass. Almost a prevent type defense here for Clayton Valley with his three touchdown lead. The only odd part, Dan, is there's so much time left in the game. Austin back throws and up and over the head of Jake Smith, who was double teamed. It looked like Crawford was there along with another teammate, and they kind of had one over the top. One over the top and one underneath on that double coverage that time. I think that was our producer director, Matt Bowler, coming in telling us that was four touchdowns here for Harrison tonight, which uh, we were already were, we're aware well, of. We were well aware of that. So Thank you, though, Matt. Matt Appreciate is it. a very good producer wow. and uh, very well versed in the. Uh, well, I don't know if he's much of, in football because he's a Rams fan. And I, I don't we know don't that, watch a whole lot of football. That's right. If you're, you're a, Rams, you're a Rams, fan. Rams fan, too. So You watch about half the season, then you give up. Handoff, Haynes up the middle, and Haynes is going to have some pretty good yardage here as it looks like he gets inside the 20-yard line. But one good thing for Northgate, even if they go on to lose this game, Tony, is that they'll be playing somewhere in the next two weeks. Probably depends on where their seating is and where uh, how many teams qualify in Division Two. but they'll be, and they might get to play here again. Third down at about four. Haynes going to get it. And it looks like he's going to have enough for a first down down. He is. That's going to be gained about six, maybe seven yards for Eric. That'll be another first down for the Broncos as they continue to move the ball here. If I'm not mistaken, Tony, I thought last year the score was 41 to 21. Do you have that in your uh, vast array of notes? <laughs> yes, I do. Last year, Clayton Valley 41-21 at Clayton Valley. 2011, Northgate a 26-21 winner here in Walnut Creek. Austin rolling was right. Has a completion. That's Muller who was hurt earlier in the ball game and now he's back in. He was hobbling off there earlier in that uh, in that first half. Nice to see him back yeah, in the get lineup. That stinger sometimes and they're kids. They're youthful. They bounce back a lot better than me and you do now. Second so down and one. From about the three-yard line, Broncos trying to push this one across. Haynes off to the right side. There's a whole pile of guys. He just keeps on pushing them. Gets very close to that goal and not quite in. No that signal. Was a, rugby, a rugby scrum there. That was. That's about the third or fourth one of the game. They're going to be very close to another touchdown here. He's going to 
Like he should have a first down. He could get inside the one yard line to get a first down. I think he is in there. It will be a first down. That makes it first down and goal. Well, Tony, you remember that infamous game they showed on, uh, it's probably on YouTube somewhere now. It was held at Arlington Stadium, not Arlington, the old Cowboys Stadium, Texas Stadium, where the team scored like four touchdowns in the last minute to tie the game, and then they ran the kickoff back to win the game on the next play. And I, think the, I did they, see they, something they, like the that. The announcer's going, oh, these yes. poor kids. <laughs> So I've seen it all, Tony. How it's heartbreaking to lose heart like They that. came all the way back. First down and goal for Northgate. And whistles blow again. Here is Mastrelli takes the handoff. But whistles blow the play dead. I don't think Coach Murphy liked the, uh, the form. You know, it's kind of interesting, though. I can see that sometimes if you're, like, in a, you know, like on the 40-yard line and you note that your safety is not covered up over the wide receiver and he's going to get it. But what really are you going to change on the one-yard line? <laughs> you're all kind of. I'm wondering. You basically have to stop the guy because they're, you know, they might do a play action or something like that, but they're not really doing anything they haven't done early in the game. So, I think Murphy just likes to go out and talk to him every once in a while. He's like, hey, time, hey guys, what's up? You know, we're up by 20. Good job. There's the Clayton Valley Eagles, and you know, remember Dan? We used to call them the Ugly Eagles, and people got upset with us. But well, then now it's back. I look on the website, and it says Ugly Eagles. It says Ugly never looks so good. <laughs> they didn't see some of my prom dates. But anyway, <laughs> it's another story. <laughs> no, actually, I, had, I actually had some good-looking prom dates, but uh, yeah, that also goes down to pure luck. Um, no, Tony, I, I do remember that. I think that was towards the end of the Pardee era. They, they said they only be called the Ugly Eagles anymore, but I thought that was kind of a cool nickname. Diving over for the touchdown. Touchdown, Broncos, Nick Mastrelli. And he is into the end zone. So a big drive by Northgate. And for the third time in the game, Northgate Broncos, a sustained drive, Dan, to cut the lead to a two-touchdown deficit. But every time they do, the Eagles well, have an answer. It kind of reminds you of the Raider game last week, which was, you know, the Raiders didn't play that horribly on offense, but they just could never stop Philadelphia. And they'd score, like, in two plays. And, and you saw here in this half, Clayton hasn't had the ball very much. I bet you Northgate ran more plays. But Clayton Valley scored on, you know, in three or four plays here, three or four plays here. Really, the only Clayton drive that was really long was the first one. Snap, hold, kick is up, kick is good. So 41 to 21. So the, the question is, do you onside kick now? You start the onside. See, I would because why not? They get two. They get two plays. They get twenty yards. They're right back where they were. I wouldn't let them r return a kick. Look what happened the last time. So I'd, I'd start the onside kick. Bro, I kind of like the one we did that Campolindo Los Lomas game a couple weeks ago. The one where you just bash the ball right off the guy's leg. That's a good strategy. Yeah, that's, that's Play a, a little strategy. pinball. Yeah, a little pinball. For those of you who remember pinball. But it's just, it's just a situation, Dan, where even though you still got 931 left, you know, you look up at that uh, scoreboard and you're still down by three scores. Well, they, well, so I, did I say they cut it to two scores? I'm sorry. It's still, it's still a 20-point game. It's still a three-possession game here. Yeah, this isn't like the MTV uh, video awards a football game or something where you have a 100-point play. You know, they used to have that. Remember the 25-foot basket <laughs> up above the two-point baskets? <laughs> Remember one time a team was down 24 and they won by one because they hit the 25-point shot? Did you hear about the crazy idea they had in Sports Illustrated? The guy says that baseball needs to be revitalized. It's, it's getting stale again. And, wow. And, no, and the idea is, is that, be, and think about this, in football you can always hand the ball off to your best player. In basketball, you can always give the ball to your best So shooter. you want your best hitter to come up every time no, or every other no, time? No, he can come up in one time in the game, they're saying. You can bring up the best hitter in any situation once. This one taken at the 45 by Clayton Valley. <clears throat> Looked like they went for that onside kick that time, Dan, but it bounced right into the arms of number four, Zach Dominguez, and he picked it up on one hop that time. And Kind of an unfortunate bounce for Northgate as it did not take that squirrely bounce. It kind of took a nice clean bounce mm -hmm. for Dominguez. Just to finish <coughs> on that thought, Tony, wouldn't that be interesting? You know, the Giants have the bases loaded, down by one in the ninth. Posey pops up, and then they go, well, you're up again. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd would go crazy. So I don't know if that will ever get passed, well, but that but was an article in Sports Illustrated. 
I don't sort of I don't believe in the thesis. I guess is, you know, I just don't. Doesn't seem like baseball's getting stale at all to me. I well, thought it was I, a, an I, interesting I, season. Yeah, I don't I don't necessarily agree with that. I think it, he's just saying, you know, that's that's the that's the one thing you can never guarantee in football that you can guarantee the others. Your best player can always win the game for you. That's, but I guess that's one of the great things about baseball. Right. Is when some guy that comes off the bench who you don't think is going to get the hit gets the hit. You know, I mean, that's why it's a, a team game. That's why all these are really team games. Now look at Edgar Renneria a couple of years ago for the Giants. I mean, he certainly wasn't one of their star players for the season, and he came up with some big hits. And by the way, as I was reminded earlier, the guy that got the Cubs job is not Edgar Renteria. It's Rich Renteria, who's right. a, a Padres coach. So. Oh, look at this. Now they're going to pass. Rowing deep down the field. Oh, and open was raw and a little bit too high. Coming over there defensively was Stephen Cuneo, number three down, but he was going to be very late. So, you know, one thing that Tim Murphy did say to me is like, hey, look, we don't throw very much, but we run the ball so well. Once we do throw, there's somebody's always open. Well, I remember back in the days of the old legitimate hot potato pitch, Ignatia, we were doing a game one night. They only threw the ball like twice, but it was for a – two for two for 157 yards and two touchdowns because the guy was so open you couldn't have caught him if you'd have had Usain Bolt playing cornerback. That's how you say that name, right? Usain Bolt. Double handoff here. Yeah, pick up a couple of yards here on second down. Leave him short of the first down by about five. And that's Raw again getting that handoff. And you go Harris into the outside, gives it back to Raw going up the middle. And there's been a couple different variations on that same play. Sometimes it's the quarterback handing off to him. Sometimes it's the back handing off to him. And yeah, I don't think that Northgate's thrown that for a loss or a no gain no. yet. I, how many have they thrown anyone for a loss? Or Almost no none. Yeah. Just not happening. But they're running that uh, variation on that play with success every time they run it. Third down and about four. Harrison, right side, picking his way through. Breaks a tackle, still on his feet, picks up a first down nearing midfield, and it will be a fresh set of downs for Miles Harrison and the Clayton Valley Eagles. It must be frustrating because you, on some of these plays, they've strung the play out nice. They've sent some guys towards him, and it just doesn't seem like you never get him down on the first uh, touch. It seems like every time he runs out and he's got open space. Why is it fourth down? Well, I guess they, 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 they marked him back. I thought he had oh, well, yeah, picked up too. the first down, but I guess. Well, I was looking at what you were looking at because yeah, I, I was looking. I thought that was the first yardage. down marker. That's. He's going to be here. fourth down here. And North, did they jump across the line? They did. Well, that's going to be a dead ball foul against the Broncos. It should be encroachment against the defense. It is. And they'll mic off, mark off. Five yards, and like you said, Dan, it's so hard enough to tackle him. Anyway, now it's going to bring up a fourth down and three instead of a fourth down and eight. So I got all all squirrely there, Dan. I I thought they had gotten a first down. I didn't you see where they there lost was no any panic yards in the booth because it's not the first time. <laughs> we'll just keep going. Just keep going. Fourth down and three for Clayton Valley. Harrison. Right side. He didn't get it. And he's going to be short. They stopped him. And here comes the Northgate offense. 7.28 to go in the game. They got to take a couple of shots here on this. They can't just go on the uh, 10 play. No. <laughs> 10 play, a uh, 54 yard drive uh, taking up six minutes. It's not going to do any good. If they, if they have any chance whatsoever, they need to go down the field quickly. So back comes the Northgate offense. As they take over here with their own 46-yard line, 7.28 to go here in the ball game. They trail by 20. Their offense has been able to move, but as Dan just alluded to, they cannot afford to take a whole bunch of time here. They've got to pick up some good chunks of yardage and get a pretty quick score and then get an onside kick. Fumble, and Austin's just going to have to cover it up. Now... The earlier fumbles, Dan, you know, you talk about, and so many people, they talk about, oh, my team, they fumbled the ball, and we, we kind of gave it away. But what we've seen here, the defense by Clayton Valley, they forced those turnovers yes. early in the game. That it wasn't, was, like, just given away by Northgate. And you got to think, too, I mean, we're in the last quarter of the season. You do not want to be seeing those kind of center quarterback changes on your last game. No, I, it looked like Austin just kind of pulled out from the center a little too early that time. 
We'll lose a couple of yards on that. Here's Austin back. Here comes the rush. Throws deep down the field. There's Wang and double team, and there's going to be a, uh, a flag thrown. Raw was there, number 18, along with Xavier Crawford, number 38. Crawford asking for an explanation. Apparently, I this saw, is going to go against the defense. I don't know. I think maybe we, it's it's a it's interference, but I thought I saw a hand come across the body. The arm bar. And, and Raw could yeah, and Raw could not lift his. Uh, excuse me, the receiver could not lift his arms up to make that catch. So preventing Wang. This is not a spot of the foul call here in high school. It's going to be from the. There's going to be pass interference, but in the NFL, it's the spot of the foul. Here, it's not. They're going to mark this off 15 yards and to a chorus of boos from the Clayton Valley side on the far side of the field. So the Broncos get a first down. They'll set the chains. And the Broncos set up in Clayton Valley territory, Dan, here at the 41-yard line. First and 10 for Northgate. Austin short drop. Now he's going to hand off. Draw play to Haynes, but not a whole lot there as he's smothered by a handful of defenders. Well, Among sure. them, number 58, Jax Carter coming up to make that stop. I'm sure, Tony, that the thought process there was that Clayton might be looking again for a long pass and try to run a draw play. It didn't work. So. No, a good call. The defense was just simply ready for him. Austin back, looking. Fires deep down the field, over the head of the intended receiver, and it's going to be incomplete. You know, I don't know if they're going to get a 30-yard pass, but they might get a 15. You saw Smith over here on the right sideline was wide open. Maybe you need to run underneath, maybe get Haynes out of the backfield on a, not a screen pass, but maybe a short pass with some momentum out of the backfield because Haynes is the kind of guy that could split through that defense, but it looks like they're backing off their linebackers even into coverage now. All right, third down, third down and call it seven. They need to get almost to the 30-yard line, to about the 31-yard line of Clayton Valley here for a first down. Obviously, two-down territory here for Northgate. Four wide receivers spread. Austin back, throws. Looked like there was a little contact. Looking for Nick Mastrelli out here down in the slot on the near side. Raw, the nearest defender. And it will bring up fourth down. But once again, throwing the ball into four defenders. And that's a tough pass for uh, to ask a young high school kid to, to kind of manipulate that kind of defense and make a catch, unless it's a perfectly thrown ball. Muller coming into the ball game, number 44. I think you got to run everyone deep and run one guy underneath, and that's going to get you your opening. Run him across the line of scrimmage and then parallel to it. Right. Across. I yeah. like there's the two go routes on one side, Dan, and then the, the slot guy kind of cutting underneath with that square out. Fake the handoff. Austin fires. He's got a man caught, and that's going to be a first down. Muller hung on after he took a shot from Shane Morris. I'll tell you, Muller's made a couple of big catches in this game tonight. So Muller, who was hurt earlier in the ball game, coming back, making a couple catches since that injury, made a big catch right there on fourth down to maintain possession here for Northgate. Nicely done by the Broncos. Austin rolling right, fires for the end zone, caught, touchdown, Broncos! You know, Tony, and there's, there's still six minutes left. Wang with the touchdown. And that one coming from about 20 yards out, Dan. So Wang gets a touchdown, and they are back within two scores yet again. So we've had one onside kick that did not work out for the Broncos as they attempt the extra point here. Sam Dale out of Austin's hole. Snap, hold, kick is up, kick is good. I really like Austin as a quarterback. The kid, there's no quit in him. And really, I, I don't think there's any quit in his team, but he really, he, I think he thinks they got a chance. You know, that's that's what they, you know, that's youth. Well, <laughs> they, but, they, they could still But play. also, Dan, you know, we've But you seen, know what? They could. <laughs> we've seen so many weird things. You take that Stanford game last night when it looked like it was completely out of hand at 26 to nothing, right? You, me, and everybody else, the rest of the West Coast that was watching the game, click away from it. You click back a few minutes later, and they're within one score. Right. So you just never know. 
Well, what they need now is a mistake. Yes. This is where they, you know, you're probably going to try an onside kick again. You have to. But they need Clayton Valley to make an offensive mistake, which really Clayton Valley has not made all game. Now they, they have not turned the ball over, and that's exactly what they need right here. Absolutely. And then they're going to need another series of downs to yeah. get back. But one thing, I think Austin, and they've shown that, I never had any doubt that they could throw the ball. It's just that they don't necessarily throw it as much as you'd like to see. I think this team could could have been a great – they have a lot of weapons, I think more receiver-wise. I mean, they have Smith and Muller and Wang and Mistrelli and Haynes could catch the ball in the backfield. You know, I think over – and this might be a weapon because, you know, everyone's going to be watching this and looking at that name. You know, when you're, when you're some team from – a hundred miles away or something, you're only going to get, you're going to see Haynes. You're going to watch the highlights. You're going to look at the stats. You're going to see Haynes. And maybe this is something that takes them to the next level as they move on, is to is to use the pass a little bit more because I think Austin's a pretty darn good quarterback. Well, he certainly has thrown the ball well here tonight. He's thrown the ball deep, Dan. He's thrown the ball with some accuracy. Certainly has some zip on the ball. And really, other than that last pass, they tend to use the side the sides of the field better than they do the middle but at that time because they were a little bit more compact down towards the uh, goal line he was able to get Wang open behind the uh, safety so here's Sam Dale I'm sure he's going to try an onside kick here he does and he hops right to them near the 50 yard line I don't think that even traveled 10 yards but it don't have to for the defense to touch it yep defense covers it up but he didn't take any time off the clock, Tony. We still have 5.52 left. Well, and as you said, Dan, it, it says it, you try these onside kicks, you kind of prove that you really can't stop them anyway. So does it matter that you they start on the 20-yard line or they start at midfield? It doesn't well, really it, matter. It also takes away 30 yards of, of field that they, time isn't running off the clock and them obtaining those 30 yards. So, but, And they have three timeouts too, Northgate. So this will be interesting to see what happens. From the 49-yard line of Northgate. Harrison, it breaks this one, cuts back, and he is gone. Harrison all the way, touchdown, Clayton Valley. Fifth touchdown of the game here for Harrison, and this one from 49 yards away. And, Dan, that's, you might as well start at midfield because if you started at 20, it would have been an 80-yard touchdown. They might touchdown. as well kick it behind them, Tony, to start. <laughs> Let them start from about the 20. The only good thing is there's still 541 left in the game. <laughs> Unbelievable, Harrison, 18 yards. Harrison, 42 yards, 20 yards, 42 yards, and 49 yards. This is Harris Ross uh, all over again. Wow, unreal. He's got to have over 200 yards rushing. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind because he had a couple of nice runs where he's, he's been tackled. Oh, absolutely. I'd like to get an official word. They're going to go to Shane Morris on the two-point conversion. Cuts it back inside, and he scores the two-point conversion. Shane Morris, who had that big uh, fumble recovery, actually just a, a strip and a takeaway with that fumble recovery, and then raced about half the length of the football field to score a defensive touchdown. Now he gets a two-point conversion here. And uh, the Clayton Valley Eagles just continue to roll it up now ahead 49 to 28, which is, <laughs> this ball game has just turned into a shootout, not unlike we expected here. Well, I kind of expected uh, maybe 31-21 or something along those lines. But, yeah, now we're at 49-28. you got to wonder, Tony, when you, at this point in the game, if number three gets the ball, how is he still doing what he's doing? Everyone, if he, when he gets the ball, you know what he's doing. You know how he does it. And he still is able to run right by guys and right into the end zone. On that last play, it looked like there was, no one even touched him. Oh, and that's a couple of times tonight when he's with those big runs, Dan, where he's just br bursted out with some room, and then nobody was able to lay a hand on him. And they talked about, uh, you know, I talked about, you know, Coach Murphy told me, well, if I would like him to improve his speed a little bit. I don't think the Broncos are really a um, – I think they, they think he's fast enough, I, yeah, I'd say. I think so. I mean, I got to think he's around 250, five touchdowns. So this is turning out to be one of the great games of the uh, the year, even though it's going to be hard to ever top 486 and seven touchdowns. Short kick taken to the 25, tripped up at about the 30, falls down to about the 34-yard line, nine yards on the return for the Broncos. But uh, the Broncos, who have certainly been gained tonight, Dan, as you alluded to, no quit in this team at all. They keep coming back, getting up off the deck. 
but the same thing kind of keeps happening to him. A little bit of Wiley Coyote. You know, he keeps trying. He keeps trying. He keeps running in the tunnel. He keeps running in the tunnel. Here comes <laughs> the, the one train. painted by the Roadrunner. <laughs> <laughs> It would take two knuckleheads like us to figure that out. So Northgate back on offense again. Still 537 to go in this football game. But again, Dan, just at an arm's length here from Clayton Valley. Austin back to pass. Fires over the middle. That one is going to be caught near midfield up the 49-yard line. Different number this time. Looked like number 13, Chris Orozco, makes the catch. The 6265 pounds junior doubles as a defensive back and he makes his first catch of the ball game so that moves the chains up to about the 49 yard line their own 49 and that's first and 10 here for northgate clock continued to motor as northgate gets set again Austin under center, wide receiver to either side. Quick throw out here to Wang, catches at the 50, makes that turn, runs up field. And then before he can get to the 45 yard land down, hit and pushed back. But he does pick about five yards on the play. It'll bring up second down. Yeah, I could see this in a playoff game, Tony, where a team, like I said, scouts out Northgate, thinks Haynes is the guy that's gonna get the ball and they come out, throw the first 10 passes of the game. A lot like this, because these guys not only can catch it, they the guys run. like Wang, they, they make that yeah. inside turn and they're, and they're running back and gaining positive yards. Wang here split to the near side, Austin back. Throws the other side, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. And that again was Orozco, number 13, hits the uh, turf in disgust. Not able to corral that one. will bring up third down. Clock stopped here at 4.33. Austin, third down, and tries to dump it off. It's going to be intercepted. Tackle is made there. It looked like Jake Smith. Who came up with that football? That's 88. Number 88, Yemi Fashola comes up with the interception. And that is turnover number four here for Northgate. And that was just not a very good pass that time coming from the Broncos. And Kyle Austin. And he really turned hasn't over made again. a bad pass. Today. No, he really hasn't. That was his worst. And Fashola, that's a big thing for you know a defensive end to come up and get an interception. You know, he doesn't get to see the ball very much. Hand off again. This time they trip him up. And look at that, Dan. They got him tackled. <laughs> and that's that's an accomplishment. That's because for a good part of the night, the Broncos have been looking at the back of his jersey running down the field. Yeah, they're going to have nightmares about that tonight if he played defense. One thing, watch Taylor when he takes the snap. It's, he doesn't just lift his leg. He just, like, jumps out of his skin to get the, the snap off. Again, Harrison. Can they get him down? First guy can't, second guy can't. He pushes them all forward. Another big gain and a first down. Boy, Northgate just in chase mode most of the night. Grabbing Dan, trying to grab on, trying to hold on. It's just none of it's working. Well, and you know, when you look at his stats, he's got 1,000 yards, but that's not. There's a lot of guys who have yeah, 800, 900, 1,000 sure. yards. They don't have the 2,000s, the 3,000s. This has really got to be considered his breakout game, you know, the biggest game of his career. Morris cuts it back, and Morris has got some room. Nice spin move there as he's tripped up. Mastrelli finally covers him up. But Shane Morris, a couple of different times, he showed some good I was speed say, too. Shane Morris could start on about wow. 50 teams in this area. You know, he's got speed. He's got some loose, uh, elusive moves, and uh, you saw him run the uh, – the fumble, the fumble brought back, back for a touchdown, yeah. I guess I don't need to ask you who the player of the game is going to be tonight. No, here, no, I think I got that one. Hand off, Harrison. I think that was Morris again. Morris, excuse me, number one, Shane Morris. 251 and counting. I don't, even, I don't think Morris is in the game. Uh, excuse me, Harrison's even in the game right now. And here no, he, he comes. came back. He came back now. You're gonna fake it. Quarterback Taylor and Taylor. Gabe Taylor into the end zone. Touchdown for Clayton Valley. 
And uh, we've said touchdown Clayton Valley a lot here tonight. Eight times, Tony. You've had uh, Harrison five times, Taylor twice, and Morris. Those are the eight touchdowns. So Gabe Taylor taking it into the end zone, following the Fasholo interception and the four turnovers, Dan. Three of the turnovers turned into touchdowns for Clayton Valley. Snap, hold, kick is up, kick is good. So Farrell knocks that one through. What's the longest you've ever said? He's <laughs> good. I just wonder what the longest is has ever been in there. <laughs> and look at that score, Dan. And that is wow. that is not a misprint. That is not a, a technical error on the part of no. the scoreboard there. It is 56 to 28 with 225 to go here in the fourth. I'll tell you, you know, Clayton Valley, the last couple, they, they were always good. Herc always had good teams. A little bit more varied in the offense, but you can really tell when the, Coach Murphy's teams, you know, and, and you look at his, go on his website. He has a website, Coach Murphy. It's like Tim, Coach Murph uh, World or something like that, dot com. And it's got the list of all the awards he's won. And it would take me the next 20 minutes to read the list, Tony, because he's won Coach of the Year awards in all regions. He's won. Uh, multiple championships. You know, he went down there, Clovis East, that was a new school. And they came right out and they were a power. And uh, you now he's come up here and now he's got uh, Clayton Valley in this new charter situation. And like I said, this will make them 32 and four over the last three years going into the playoffs as more than likely a one or two seed. Clayton to kick. Taking it about the eight, across the 20. To about the 25-yard line, and the Broncos will set up there again. First down at 10, still plenty of time for the Broncos to at least try to mount another drive, but obviously the competitive phase of this game has passed. And you've got to hand it, Dan, like you said, to, to Coach Murphy and the Clayton Valley Eagles, all that was advertised of them. They've been that and then some here this evening. Well, I think in all three of the games that we've done this year, Tony, that's kind of been the theme. When the first game we did was Los Lomas here against Northgate, and the question was, is Northgate for real? And they answered that question, and over the season they have. There's still going to be an 8-2 and two team with losses right. only to Concord and Clayton Valley. That is not exactly the worst season ever no. here at Northgate High School. The second game we did, we did Camp Lindo and Los Lomas, and of course the question always is there, is Coach Macy telling us the truth? <laughs> Because there's always someone hurt, and there's always so. Oh, Dan, I lost my kicker, and my linebacker's the quarterback. Yeah, and you've won 32 of your last 35 oh, games, and they're going to be undefeated probably again going into the playoffs. He's the rich guy telling me that he's broke. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any money, but here's my new Porsche. And then tonight we come out here, and we haven't seen Clayton Valley. Uh, I think it was a year ago tonight we did our last game with Clayton Valley. It was against Northgate over there. And we're seeing once again that this is a tremendous football team. So we, they've answered the questions over the course of our three games this year. Austin Fires has it complete. Orozco. And then coming up to make the tackle for Clayton Valley, Justin Zapanta, number 34. They're defensively for Clayton. Clock rolling. A minute down to a minute 50 here to go in the ball game. As the Clayton Valley Eagles on their way to a second straight Diablo Valley Athletic League title in Tim Murphy's second year. Another swing pass, back-to-back -back swing passes. They've used that very effectively here tonight, Dan. That's Wang, who scored that last touchdown for the Broncos. He's knocked out of bounds at midfield. Well, you got to think, uh, you know, Haynes probably, if he's near 100 yards, it's because he accumulated a lot of carries and got some. He, he didn't really break off any big runs tonight. There was a couple. But Austin's got to be over 200 yards passing tonight. He's had a lot of, and I, especially, I'll tell you the thing about him, Tony, is he throws that ball out to the sideline very accurately. That's a hard pass for a high school quarterback to make a lot of times, and he gets it out here, gives his receivers then the ability to run with it, which is the biggest part of that. If you're throwing it behind guys all the time and they don't have that speed coming around the corner, it's not going to go from very far. And the Eagles call timeout. That's because they had one more. Why not? I told you. Coach Murphy's over. Hey, guys, what move are you going to do now? <laughs> now? You can't take him with you, apparently. No, no he's, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's just going over there to have a chat. 
give everyone a chance to get a drink. But uh, Tony, one thing we should tell everyone, uh, we won't be talking to you in the rest of the, this year probably. We're going to do some basketball games in uh, January and February, so have a have a hot, happy uh, and safe Thanksgiving. And you too, a nice Dan. Merry Thank you very much. That. And happy everyone, holidays to everyone, you. Everyone uh, take care. But uh, so you know, we'll be doing some basketball games uh, featuring the North Gates of the world and the uh, Berean Christians of the world over here on the Walnut Creek side. Hope to give you some, some good games. North Gate's always exciting, especially in their gym where there are people already lined up for Midnight Madness, I think, uh, starting tomorrow night. Going to run a draw play going up the middle, but uh, Clayton Valley sniffing that out. One, that went out pretty quick. Peralta came up there to make that tackle. We gave it to Bukas, who's uh, ran the ball a couple of times tonight. But uh, North, you know what? Northgate's going to be around. They're, they're probably going to, I would say, they'll probably be favored in their first game, and then that's when it's going to get tough. If they're, le if they're left standing with Casa Grande, a conquered Clayton Valley themselves, and I'm sure there's a couple other teams up in the, especially up north that fall into that Division II level. They're, 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 that's where the tough games are going to come in. But they beat San Marin earlier, so you never know what will happen. Here's Wang with a swing pass. And he picks up a few yards. Clock continues to roll at 45 seconds ago. Now it stops. And he's going to call timeout Northgate. Well, you know the thing here, though, Tony, and this is what this is why you coach. You know what coaches are paid to do. You run the clock out. You're down 20. You're going to win the game. What if a guy goes over, catches a pass, and breaks his ankle, and then you yeah. don't have him for a playoff game? So in this right. point right now, I'd almost just say, you know what? Let's just go home. We did. We did the best we can. 58-35. 56-35 isn't getting us a higher but seed. You, no, but you almost <laughs> never see that, Dan, from the team that's they behind. Never, they never, never do. do. They always, you know, they always play. And I'm not saying it's not good to play it out, but I'm saying if this was a regular game and it was their last game, fine, play it out. But they do have playoff games. That's coming right. Up. That's you don't a very want to see good point. Anyone get hurt just by accident? And one thing I've been very impressed by Clayton Valley too. You know, in the past, Clayton Valley was accused of some. You know, sometimes their players were a little dirty. Not before, you know, I'm not saying it was either of the coaches that taught that, but you know, there were some times when you see some personal fouls and some stuff come in late in their games. They've been very good tonight. They have not done any late hitting. They have not done. I've even seen them pull up a few times. There's Morris again. Jim Morris gets the interception. Pass intended for Smith. He's going to have a chance to return this one. 25. Cross the 30. Cross the 35. Breaks a tackle. Across the 40, 45 across midfield. Gets away from another tackle. Now finally hemmed in and pushed out uh, past the 40 at about the 39-yard line of Northgate. You turned that 51 yards, Tony. Boy, Morris has just been, a, you know. He's been the second he, star of the game. Outstanding here tonight. Yeah, he's you, been electric here tonight. Be, uh, it would be uh, Harrison and him, and I'd, then I'd give the, if this was hockey, I'd give the stars to Harrison, Morris, and Austin. Who's played? A, I thought played a really good game in uh, the face of this 28-point uh, loss. Now, if they don't just kneel down, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and say this is so. Anyway, what I was saying though, Tony, twenty-four is, seconds. I noticed left. tonight, and maybe it's not just Clayton Valley, but high school kids sometimes do the stupid stuff when you get a guy down, and then you go in and hit him, and you get the penalties. I saw Clayton pros and, do it too. I, I know, I watched that. <laughs> But I saw tonight a number of guys, you know, go in and, and pull up and tap themselves and, and not make that stupid play, which gives you a penalty and can really ruin the game. And I guess that's it, Tony. They're going to just let the clock run out. That'll do it. As the final seconds will be ticking off here, they do not have to run another play. The Clayton Valley Eagles, and by virtue of their 56-28 to win here against the Northgate Broncos, have claimed the DVAL championship for 2013. From all of us here at Walnut Creek TV, congratulations to the Clayton Valley Eagles. Yeah, absolutely. They played a great game tonight. You, and I, like I say, Harrison might, might have had a game like this down the line somewhere, but really probably got a figure with his. We, we estimate 171 yards just on the touchdown runs. <laughs> Five touchdowns, probably in the 250 range. Are you going to go down and, and I'm going to go down and try to get Harrison for an interview, a post-game interview. So I'm going to be taking off here in just a bit. But, Dan, we talked about all the things that, uh, that Clayton Valley does and what, what kind of team they are, and they showed that and then some yes. here tonight, even better than advertised coming here tonight against a very game Northgate Broncos squad. Yeah, it was, a, it was an exciting football game. There's a lot of big plays in this game tonight. And, you know, Northgate's still kind of on that rise. You know, they haven't, they haven't got to that point of a 10-0 season yet. They could be on their way, though, because this team, as you mentioned, some of the records of their past coaches and teams, now you have a team now that's made the playoffs three of the last four years. You have a team that's won 16 of their last 20 games during the regular season games and, and preseason games. So they're, they're on their way. 
but they haven't. Clayton Valley's been successful for a long, long time over the course right. of the last 15, 20 years. Hardly ever a bad team comes out of Clayton Valley. Always a tough team. Even when I was in high school, and that was a long time ago, Tony, uh, <laughs> they were always considered the tough team to play. You know, Pittsburgh was the speed team, the fast team, the team you had to really watch out for with all the athletes they throw at you. Clayton was the tough team. That's, I think that's what I was trying to get at with that. Not necessarily dirty, but the tough team. They always hit you. They always came in waves, and they still are that way. That's just how they play. It's always been their tradition. Well, huge tonight was Clayton Valley. They did it with offense, defense, even some special teams got in the act, and it was a resounding victory for the Eagles, who are DVAL champions for 2013. We'll step aside, and I'll go down and come back, come back with that interview with Miles Harrison in just a moment. Northern California's largest community arts program is here in Walnut Creek. We have over 180 professionals teaching music, dance, drama, and visual arts. With over 680 classes, workshops, and events. There are classes for youth, teens, and adults. With opportunities for beginners through professionals. Find your spark. Learn, inspire, grow. Good to go. Now that was easy. Hi, welcome to Inside Center Rep. My name is Carrie Lederer, and I'm the curator of exhibitions here at the Bedford Gallery. Hi there, welcome to Get Lit. Problem? A discarded cigarette is a big problem. Cigarette butts are toxic and don't biodegrade. They travel in storm drains to end up harming our water supply and poisoning wildlife. But running this problem out of town is easy.
make a stand. Put cigarette butts where they belong. Keep Walnut Creek clean. They made a sign. Cheer made a sign. Cheer made a sign. League champs on it. They knew. They knew what was going to happen. Okay, everybody's going to take pictures. I know Dax. Okay. Hey. Get a little picture taken. But listen again, one more time. Get some sleep tonight. Recover from this week and be there at school at 9:45 tomorrow morning. You guys got me? Yes, What's the theme this week? No breakdown. No breakdown. You guys got me? Yes, sir. Let's go, family out, baby. Let's go. 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 Let's All right, here with uh, Miles Harrison, five touchdowns. You know, we had 171 yards just on the touchdown. Now, you told me it was 285, so a huge night. Talk about that big night for you tonight. Man, it was crazy, you know. I came out with these uh, spats, <laughs> and coach was like, man, you better get 250 or you never wear those again. So, you know, I had to play my hardest and play my best game I ever played. Yeah, probably uh, definitely your best game. So many yards. You came in with over 1,000 yards, but tonight was one of those times where it just seemed like they couldn't get you down. What was going on there tonight? Either you were running by them or running through them. Yeah, we, just ran the, we pretty much ran the same play over and over. We just pounded it up the gut, you know, just looking, holes, breaking tackles. I was not trying to go down. <laughs> So what does it feel like being DVAL champion second year in a row? Oh, it was nice, man. You know, <laughs> just bragging rights all over, man. To get, and hopefully we can get a uh, first seed for playoffs next week. So, you know. Yeah, it would be nice to know what yeah, happened nice. to the at Casa Grande game uh, tonight. Mm -hmm. um, talk about the team as a whole, though. The special teams played really well, made some plays. Shane Morris yeah. uh, made that one play um, on the defense. The defense came up with several stops. It wasn't just the offense tonight. Yeah, well, the special teams came to play, man. We just practiced that all week. You know, defense came to play. We stepped it up way better. Uh, way better uh, last than from last week, you know. And offense, you know, you always come to play. So, yeah. All right, congratulations to the Clayton Valley Eagles and Miles Harrison. Five touchdowns on the night and now headed for the playoffs. Well, for all of us here at Walnut Creek TV, I'm Anthony Schultz saying so long, and we'll see you next time on Walnut Creek TV.